It was a rainy afternoon here in downtown Cincinnati on this Friday, but it has cleared up now for the most part, and we will get this game started on time at Great American Ballpark. It's the Toronto Blue Jays and the Cincinnati Reds right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi, and a pleasant Friday evening, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Couch, along with the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley, for the weekend series against the first place Toronto Blue Jays out of the American League's East Division. Now, Cowboy, when people talk about this Blue Jays club, most people know them as a home run hitting team, but there's more to them than that. <laughs> yeah, there is, Jim, but you can't help but see the 95 home runs that this club has hit. Toronto seems to hit the ball out of the ballpark with some semblance of regularity. A huge May for both Edwin Encarnacion and Jose Batista. This is a ballpark. The ball carries very well. It'll be up to Matt Latos tonight to make sure he keeps the ball down and keeps the runners off base ahead of these guys just in case they connect. Take a look at the starting pitchers now for tonight's game. On the red side, it's Matt Latos making his second start. What a dominating performance he put in against the wall. He really did, Jim. I mean, how much better could you ask him to pitch? Uh, six innings of two hit shutout baseball. And I think if it had not been for his being his first start, he probably would have pitched deeper into that ball game. But your first start, you have a lot of adrenaline. That adrenaline makes you sore the following day. And let's face it, Matt Latos is a big part of this pitching staff. You want him out there every fifth day. That's why the short the start was cut short. Now on the Toronto side, it's a right hand who has spent most of this year at Triple A, Liam Hendricks. Liam Hendricks is a, a fly ball pitcher. And if you're a fly ball pitcher at Great American Ballpark, more times than not, uh, that ERA is going to go up. He's going to have to figure out some way to keep the Reds on the ground. If he can do that, he'll be all right. If not, that 2.31 will be different when he leaves here tonight. All right. As we mentioned, the first place Toronto team in town, they take on a very hot Reds team. They've won four of the last six on the road trip, and June has been a very good month for them, particularly on the offensive side. Jim Day will delve into that more when we come back.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Well, if you're headed to the Reds game, we will have showers and thunderstorms around the area, but the line of storms should be south and east of us by 6 o'clock. Temperatures around the first pitch near 73, dropping into the lower 70s throughout the game. Let's go, Reds. Let's get a W. I'm Jim Day on the field. No rain at the moment, which is good news. And also good news for you Reds fans out there is the bats have heated up for Cincinnati. Now, outside of having Shin Su Chu last year in the leadoff spot, it has been a major struggle for the Reds to find not only a leadoff hitter, but someone to hit in the two spot as well. And of late, man, are these guys coming through. We'll start with Billy Hamilton. We could be seeing a star in the making right now. You look on his road trip numbers and a 448 average, which includes three straight, three hit games. You've got to go back to the 1950s for the last Reds rookie to accomplish that. He is not swinging at as many bad pitches. He's not striking out. He's stealing bases. And oh, can he play some defense? He's setting the table. And then Todd Frazier is coming through as well. This guy has went to work with Don Long, the hitting coach. 333 average, two long ones, including that big, big home run against the Pirates. Seven runs driven in on the Reds' road trip. And you can all, you can single those guys out, but you can take it a step further. The entire Reds team has been getting it done. Winners of six of the last eight. You look at the National League ranks and team average, doubles, home runs, extra base hits, and runs per game. First and second over that span in the National League. With the Reds starting pitching, if the hitting continues, Look out, it could be an exciting rest of the 2014 season. But man, do they have a hurdle in the way. Interleague action coming up. First place, Toronto Blue Jays and the Red Legs. First of three from GABP. And we're back after this. Ohio is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. John Gibbons is the manager of this Toronto club. He's in his second stint with them. He managed them back in 05 through 07 then was fired now has come back and he's in his second year full year since uh, returning to this club seven overall and he's six games under 500. 
His lineup card for tonight's game presented by Meyer looks like this Jose Reyes the former National Leaguer then Melky Cabrera another former National Leaguer then Jose Bautista the former Red Edwin Encarnacion is in the cleanup spot Deanna Navarro the former Red then Brett Laurie Colby Rasmus the former Cardinals in the seventh spot Kawasaki is the eight hitter the second baseman and Liam Hendricks bats ninth. And does the pitching on the mound for the Reds. Start number two is the big right hander, Matt Latos. Latos had six solid, solid innings, Cowboy, on Saturday against Milwaukee. He really did, Jim. And, and you look at those numbers, and the one that jumps out to me is not the not the no runs, it's the no walks. And you come back from a start uh, like Matt had in spring training where you're on the disabled list, not once, but twice. And you're going through rehab. You're able to come back against a, a really solid hitting team like the Milwaukee Brewers and throw the ball the way he did. Man, that's getting it done. There are his numbers from a year ago. He was a 14 game winner with a 3.16 ERA. Unfortunately for him, his season kind of came undone there at the end when he was scratched or told at least Brian Price, the pitching coach at the time, that he could not pitch in that wild card game due to those, uh, what we found out, were bone chips in his bone elbow. Bone chips in the elbow. He'll face Jose Bautista to get things going here tonight. And the first pitch is in there for a called strike, and we are underway. Game time temperature 77 degrees. To correct myself and say that was a ball, according to Alan Porter, the home plate umpire. Now a strike on a swing and a miss. Bautista is in the three spot. Melky Cabrera, the former Giant, in the two spot, and Jose Reyes leads things off, hitting 262 with five home runs. Earlier this month, turned 31 years old, long time Mets player. One of three switch hitters in the Toronto lineup here tonight. Now the big key to this lineup is keeping Reyes and Cabrera off base. You know Batista and Encarnacion are going to be swinging for the downs. I mean, they want to hit the ball out of the ballpark. 36 home runs between the two. Over 100 RBIs. Well there are a few Blue Jays that have faced Matt Latos in the past even though he has not started against Toronto. He faced him when uh, he was in San Diego. And you know one time. I don't know that you can really decipher a pitcher. I think Matt's come leaps and bounds from when he was in San Diego and he was pretty darn good then. Career wise making his 67th red start and he gets the pop up off the bat of Reyes handled by. The third baseman Frazier and a good start here in the top of the first. Take a look at the Reds defensively behind Matt Latos brought to you by your Ford dealers. In the outfield Schumacher is in left Hamilton in center Bruce in right the infield is Frazier and Cozart left side Phillips and Votto right side a battery of Latos and Devin Mesoraco. It was Brian Pena who caught him on Saturday Mesoraco today. Hey, the way Billy Hamilton's been playing center field, they could pencil him in CF, LF, and RF. Center, left, and right. He is covering some territory. He really has been remarkable to watch. Some of the plays he made, Jeff, out in, uh, in Pittsburgh. One coming in, one going back, going to left center, going to right center. He's really been incredible. Well, the, the turn and run and the slam or the leap into the wall and still holding on to the baseball is uh, that's a play that. I don't know how you do that. Melky Cabrera bats now with one man out. Second of the three switch hitters we will see in their lineup. Melky playing left field. He leads the American League in at bats with 305. Comes in at 298 overall. Phillips gets the chance here on a high bouncing ground ball, and Cabrera is retired. Cabo, you talked about those plays that the Hamilton made yesterday. Let's take a look at first the one he came in on against McCutcheon. It's all about the jump, and Hamilton gets some phenomenal jumps. Now, this is the ball that I thought was incredible. He never breaks stride. He leaps and just slams into the wall and then comes up and almost doubles the runner off of first base. There are a lot of speedy center fielders out there. 
but I don't know too many that are as fearless as Billy Hamilton. That last one was the one he made in the ninth inning against Travis Snyder coming off the bench to pinch hit was uh, just incredible the amount of ground he covered. Now we talked so many times about the, the quickness of Jay Bruce and the first step that he gets and how it's key to his great defensive play. Bautista hits it in the air and into shallow left. Schumacher there and he has it and a good first for Matt Latos a one two three frame against the very talented offensive team of the Toronto Blue Jays. Hamilton walks to the plate to get things started with a very good road trip. He had 13 hits, 29 at bats, a 448 average on the trip. He gains uh, into this game a hitting streak. It sits at uh, six in a row and eight of nine. It says eight right there. Billy, then Frazier, then Votto here in the bottom of the first inning against this right hander, Liam Hendricks, a native of. Australia. Hendricks throws a lot of strikes. Tries to stay down with the sinking fastball. You'll see an occasional breaking ball and change up. But his key is get the ball over the plate. He had a streak earlier in Buffalo where he did not go, not walk a batter for 28 and a third innings. And Buffalo is the Triple A club for the Blue Jays. Yeah, he put up very good numbers at Triple A this year. Six and zero with a 1.92 ERA. But when they've called upon him, Cowboy, to come up here and pitch, both times he was very good. I think when, once you've been around, and he's made 29 big league starts, so I think he understands that at this level, you've got to throw strikes, you've got to keep the ball down, and change speeds. In the air by Hamilton in the left field chased by Melky Cabrera and the left fielder will get there and that's how the Reds first inning get started. Take a look now at Brian Price's Cincinnati Reds lineup tonight brought to you by Meyer Hamilton Frazier and Votto Phillips in the cleanup spot plus 300 here at home this year. Ben Bruce and then Mezzarocco the bottom three Skip Schumacher Zach Cozart and Matt Latos. Here is Frazier at 279 with a team leading 16 home runs, 41 runs batted in, and hits in each of his last three times up yesterday. And he's another one that had a very good road trip, 10 out of 30 with a couple of home runs. Play him straight away. 
then he wrapped one into right field. So four hits in his last four times up for Todd Frazier. That'll bring Votto to the plate as we take a look at the Blue Jays defensive alignment behind uh, the front Andrew Hendricks brought to you by your four dealers Cabrera Rasmus just back from the DL and then Bautista on the infield Laurie at third Reyes at short Kawasaki just called up from Triple A Buffalo at second and Canacion at first Hendricks throws to the former Red Deanna Navarro behind the plate for this team and it's interesting to see how the American League clubs defense Votto and Bruce Toward the hole, and it's under the glove of the shortstop Reyes. Heads up running play here by the runner from first, Frazier. He hustles over to third. He kept his eye on that ball. Cowboy got a good read on it when it went under the glove of the uh, shortstop Reyes. Well, that's a play normally you will see Jose Reyes make. Looked like he got his feet tangled just enough to where he didn't get the glove down in time. You're right. The Reds, the Reds have been very aggressive on the base pass. They've been very aggressive at the plate, and that has resulted in a whole lot of wins here lately. I'm telling you, Jimmy, they keep this going offensively. This club is going to be one to be reckoned with because we know every fifth day you're going to get a solid start. Well, the Reds have scored in the first inning in six of their last seven games. They produced one yesterday in Pittsburgh and have a great opportunity here. In the bottom of the first tonight against the Toronto Blue Jays. His team overall runners in scoring position is 11th in the National League. But look at this number put up on this recent road trip. I, I don't know that you can beat that. There are going to be some teams that, that hit well. The key is just to keep it going. You're not going to hit 371 forever. The truth of the matter is, you'd be happy if you hit 271. Yeah, it's just the quality of the bats. I think we've seen that change really dramatically over the last couple of weeks, really since the calendar changed from May to June. And, and obviously, with Joey Votto being back in the lineup, I think it changes things. It, it makes the opposing pitcher a little bit more wary uh, of that presence in the lineup. It gives you that guy. Phillips ahead now, two balls and a strike. He drove in seven runs on the trip, six of them on the first leg up in Milwaukee, a trip that was very successful for the Reds at four and two. And boy, really had the chance to be ultra successful had they been able to come up with that one yesterday. Toward third runner coming to the plate. The Jays go to second out, go back to first out, and that's a 5 4 3 inning ending double play. Lori to Kawasaki to Encarnacion ends the bottom of the first.
Take a look at tonight's storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Here's the series history between these two teams. They've not met since 2011. They have met four times total in a series. Two here, two up in Toronto. And in each instance, Toronto has won two out of three. Well, it's been Hammer City for the most part from the Toronto side. Uh, they have hit the ball extremely well. You see those numbers. And... Starter ERA at 9.35 and a team average of 291. Uh, that, that is what the Reds are trying to stop here in this three game series. So Matt Leto is back to work. He'll get the middle part of the order. And here is Edwin Encarnacion, the former Red, traded away, uh, of course. Back to the uh, over to the Toronto Blue Jays in 2010. Had his struggles over there, Cowboy, at the beginning, but boy, he has really turned it around as of late. I think I think Edwin Encarnacion presents the greatest danger in this lineup because he is trying to prove, even now, that the Reds should not have let let him go. And it, it's just human nature. Your old ball club, you go back to play them. You want to show them? Well, look what I've done. What he did in May was almost oh. major league record setting in terms of the 16 home runs he hit. He tied an American League record for homers in the month of May. Pops one up here, and it's handled by Joey Votto. Interesting to read the quotes by Votto in the Inquirer today. He said that he and Encarnacion have remained uh, very close since uh, Edwin was traded away. Well, you make relationships in that locker room that for some guys they last a day, for others they last a lifetime. Leadoff man retired. The batter now is Deonor Navarro. This guy has been in the last what four or five years of his career primarily a backup and now the Blue Jays Jeff go out and sign him to a two year deal as their number one guy. Played with the Reds of course two years ago 2012 started the year in the minor leagues with Louisville but once he came up he did uh, a really nice well. job here. He really did a good job. Last year we saw him with the Cubs. Which hitter slices this one to left that'll be handled by Schumacher so five up five down against Matt Latos here in the top of the second. When Matt is really keeping the ball down in the strike zone early in the count and as big as he is at, at six five and you've got the extra height of the mound when you're throwing downhill and catching the bottom of the strike zone it's really tough to center. Cowboy, a lot of folks were wondering and and maybe even upset about why he left the game after six innings in the game at uh, Milwaukee in his debut Saturday, but uh, didn't surprise you. No, it didn't. And the reason it didn't surprise me is I know how much the adrenaline, how sore it makes you after that first start because you overextend, uh, you do things that you you couldn't do in rehab because you didn't have that same kind of big league adrenaline game situation when the numbers go on the back of the baseball card let me tell you something you kick it up a whole different gear Brett Laurie on a ball hit toward right diving stop by Brandon Phillips he knocked it down and just couldn't quite get a handle on the ball the throw on to first for Brandon Phillips he's upset he thinks he should have made that play and truth be told that's a heck of an effort just to stop it from going into right well it just tells you what Brandon's expectations are of himself and it looked like that ball took a little bit of a hop on the lip of the grass no it just took a hop and kicked off the heel of his glove I, I think Brandon Phillips feels like he should make every play when the ball is hit that way and let's face it most times he does. Well, Brett Laurie is the first base runner of the game for Toronto. They come into this game sixth in the American League in batting average, but second in runs scored, second in on base percentage, and of course, as Jeff was talking about in our open, number one in all of Major League Baseball with 95 home runs. Here's another player that uh, Reds and Reds fans are familiar with, the former Cardinal 
Colby Rasmus. Rasmus only activated for the last two games. He was on the disabled list with a right hamstring strain for just over a month. And he pulls one into right. That's a hit. Lori will turn the corner. He'll head to third. Bruce unloads the throw and it comes up wide. It was on a line, but to the left of third base, Frazier had to go off the bag to make the catch of the ball. Jay had a shot there as he charged the ball really well as it came off the bat. It was not hit very hard. Looked like he got in on the hands of Rasmus, and as Bruce got it, he came up firing. It didn't quite have time to get his feet set and just pulled a little wide of the bag. Well, after the first two retire, the next two get base hits, and the batter now will be the second baseman, Munanori Kawasaki. Kawasaki signed a couple of years ago with the Seattle Mariners. He played a total of 61 games with them in 2012, last year with the uh, Toronto Club, and He's been down at their triple A team this year before recently getting the call up. Down at Buffalo, he was hitting 276 in 44 games. He's just going to try to slap the ball. That's what he does. He is one of, and they've really had a problem in this spot this year, primarily due to uh, an injury to Mazer is Turris. Seven different players start a game at second base for them. And now, Brett Lorry, who was playing second, has moved over to third. Votto waits on this soft ground ball, steps on the bag. Kawasaki retired, and so are the Blue Jays in the top of the second. Kroger and the Reds are proud to team up to offer you a great value this season. The Kroger meal deal. Check concession stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger meal deal, which includes a hot dog, a bag of chips, 16 ounce Coke, and during this homestand, a Chobani flip Greek yogurt. Make sure you get your Kroger meal deal today. Up come the Reds in the bottom of the second against this right hander, Liam Hendricks, we mentioned out of Australia, Perth, Australia. Got into professional baseball here in the States back in 2007 when he signed with the Minnesota Twins. And I read a story, Cowboy, that said he signed with the Trent Twins. First of all, he said he liked their organization and the way they treated him. But secondly, they had a lot of Australian players within the system, and he thought the transition to American baseball would be easier that way. Now, the transition is never easy. 
It doesn't matter if you if you have your best friend on the team. It's all about the stats. Here's Bruce to lead things off in the bottom of the second. Mezzarocco and Schumacher to follow against Hendricks. 6 1, 205 pounder. Talked about those stats, uh, the starts he made earlier against Oakland and Tampa Bay. The last one, a quality start, two runs in six innings. Hit hard by Jay up the middle, and a base hit starts the bottom of the second. Sinking fastball, and you can see where Bruce makes contact. This ball is up about mid thigh. And if you're a sinker ball pitcher, you want it around the kneecaps, not where that pitch was. Jay did a good job just driving it right back up the box. Well, both teams, a couple of hits now as Bruce gets aboard. Here's Devin Mezzarocco. What a clutch home run he hit in the top of the ninth inning yesterday in Pittsburgh against Jason Grilly. We hit that ball so far that the Pirates have decided they're not going to use Grilly in the ninth. They're going to use Mark Melanson. Well, it seemed, didn't it? Just a matter of time because Melanson had been doing such a good job. Here's a shot to left field. That's a home run off the bat of Devin Mezzarocco. His second in his last three at bats. But Mezzarocco is 11th of the year. That's another ball that got up in the hitting zone, and he knew exactly what to do with it. That pitch appeared to be a hanging breaking ball and Mezzarocco was still able to muscle it out. That ball was not hit on the fat part of the bat and it still cleared the fence by a ton. Watch this ball as it comes out of Hendricks. It's a hanging breaking ball 83 miles an hour middle in. Normally a hitter pulls that foul. Mezzarocco just flexes his muscle. There's a pretty big discrepancy between these two teams in terms of the home runs they have hit. We've talked about the 95 by the Blue Jays. The Reds came into this game with 61, 10th in the National League in that uh, that department, but they use the long ball here to get on the board first in the bottom of number two. Well, Jim, we, you and I were talking about the offense of the Reds here lately, and they just keep it going. They're on a roll right now. Confident and swinging well. As a Rocco went through that uh, little valley after he came off the disabled list, but he's climbing out of it pretty well now. Wouldn't yes. you agree? Yes, he is. And it's not just about the the two home run balls. It's just about making solid contact. And, and I think Devin would tell you he's seen some pitches that he could handle, but he was too quick and he was pulling and foul. That ball he was inside of, got it right on. The good part of the bat. Schumacher comes into this game at 232 with a homer. He's driven in 11. He made the start on Wednesday, second game of that Pittsburgh series, and went two for four with three RBIs. Another one that went through a little bit of a valley as of late. Hendricks gave up a home run ball in each of the two starts he made back in the month of May for this team and he gives one one here in inning number two tonight against the Red Lakes. I was telling you earlier this guy's a fly ball pitcher. If you're a fly ball pitcher in this ballpark. That's not a good thing. You can see where the pitches are from Liam Hendricks. He is trying to run the ball away from the left handers in on the righties. But the ball is not at the kneecaps. It's not down where the catcher Deanna Navarro is putting the glove. That ball is up around mid thigh and it is very hittable. Foul ball down by Edwin Encarnacion. And he was traded over. In uh, 2009 near the end of the season they put him at third base in Toronto as well and it didn't really work out as much here and it really didn't work out over there not so much the fielding part but the throwing is what always been a problem for him. And you know that had to affect uh, his confidence just in his overall game. He dies and cannot come up with that ball in Carnacion. It skips by him and on into right field. Schumacher is aboard and the Reds get their third consecutive hit of this inning. 
The Reds already have five hits on the board, and you can see again, even with a great effort by Encarnacion, that ball was hit so hard, he's not getting that baseball. And if Hendricks doesn't start getting the ball back down in the strike zone, it's going to be a short night for this Toronto youngster. Here's the eight hitter in the Reds order, Zach Cozart. Zach, a couple of hits yesterday at a pretty good road trip, eight for 23 with a couple of RBIs. Brings a hitting streak of his own into this game, modest, albeit at four, but 12 hits, a 12, a hit in 12 of his last 13 games. Alan Porter calling the balls and strikes for tonight's game. Last two pitches to Cozart are the best two pitches that Hendricks has made thus far. Down at the knees with good movement. Zach now in the hole, no balls and two strikes. Talked about getting a hit in 12 of his last 13. That certainly has been reflected in his month of June at 286. And overall, he's raised his average over 20 points. You talk about pitching down in the zone, Jim. There are a lot of pitchers, especially young pitchers, that feel like they have to clear that front shoulder in order to get the ball down. They want to get that front shoulder out of the way and so they can see down in the zone. That's not how you do it. You throw over the front shoulder. Schumacher on the move as Kozar shoots it out into right. Skip turns the corner. He'll hustle over to third as the right fielder Bautista gets the ball back in. Nice job of hitting and running there by the Reds and it's runners at the corners with nobody out and they put four consecutive hits together. Well, you can do that with a guy that is around the plate and coming into this ball game. We talked about the control of Hendricks which is awfully good. He throws a lot of strikes a lot of pitches around the plate. And when you when you've got a pitcher on the mound that's going to be around the plate a lot you can afford to hit and run whether you have two strikes or not. Now an opportunity to add to what is a two nothing Reds lead here in the bottom of the second with Matt Latos at the plate. That first game on Saturday at Milwaukee he went 0 for 2. A year ago he drove in. Four runs. But he's capable. And he'll bunt this one foul for a strike. He had six sacrifices a year ago. Talking to the former. Red Deonor Navarro he would have been here Matt's uh, first year in 2012. See where this one caught him right. Oh boy. You don't have a pad on that upper thigh. You're really at the mercy of the ball once the ball is bunted. Ball ricochets off the bat. You don't know where it's going. Coming in from third. Lato's laid off, took a called strike, and now he's down 0-2. You can see the third base runner Skip Schumacher following Lori towards the plate. That's what you're taught as a runner at third base. This is not about a squeeze play, but if Lori comes in with the base, comes in to defense the bunt, and he turns to throw the ball to first, if you follow him down the line, you can walk home. If it's Billy Hamilton down there, you could get a couple of steps even in front of him, figuring that you could beat him back to the bag anyway. Yeah, I guess. Billy could probably play the little league rule and just keep his foot on the bag. One and two now to Latos. They roll it slowly towards short. The play is at first. He out recorded there. Latos comes up with a well placed ground ball and a run batted in. That was better than a bunt. Not only did you advance Kozark to second base, but you score Schumacher. And it's those little things just like that that 
early on weren't happening for this team that now have been happening. When you put the ball in play, it's very similar to being on the mound. You make a batter put the ball in play, give your defense a chance, you get outs. And on the flip side, as an offensive player, if you put the ball in play, you've got a chance to get on because the defense might boot it. More times than not, you're not going to happen. That ball bounces away from Navarro, allowing the runner to go to third base, Zach Kozart. That's going to be a pass ball. Put pressure on the other club, Jim. You can force them to make mistakes, whether it be on the mound or in the field of play. Billy Hamilton right near 300 from the left side. He's a natural right handed hitter, but he gets so much action against right handed pitchers. He bats naturally much more from the left side. He started this game at 277 overall, but 295 from the left side. With the infield in, he pops it up. This ball has a chance, and this ball is in for a hit, and it's going to end up as a double for Billy Hamilton. What speed can do for you, it shows right there. That ball against the normal depth infield is caught. But with the second baseman Kawasaki playing in, he couldn't quite get to it. Hamilton hustled all the way and ends up with a double. We refer to that one as a Texas leaguer and a great effort by Kawasaki. But as far as he had to go there, no chance. And Hamilton never slowed up. Check him out. All right, I'm going to put it into fifth gear now. No chance. His 12th double of the year, another run scores for the Reds, has been a four-run frame. And now Pete Walker, the pitching coach of the Blue Jays, goes to the mound. And how many guys, Jim, make a double out of a ball that landed 10 feet out of the infield? There aren't many. Oh, kidding. Billy's hitting streak now at nine games. Career best for him, and he puts on that sliding protector on his hand. Remember in Pittsburgh the other day, he did not have it, and when he tried to steal third and was successful there, he jammed that finger again. Runner going to third. Hamilton gets in there easily, and a stolen base. Laurie is saying they got him. Let's see if John Gibbons comes out and ultimately will challenge this call. Well, Rob Drake is saying that when Gibbon or when Laurie made the tag, he he knocked the hand of Hamilton off the bag after Hamilton was already on the bag. You can't do that. Well, it appeared he got in there anyway. First of all, he was safe, and then he's, you're, you're exactly right. Laurie's leg kind of pushed Billy off the base. Just forced him off the back with his knee and his arm, and you can't do that. That for Hamilton will be his 30th stolen base of the year. Watch the little leg kick here by Laurie. Ever so subtle, he kicked it off of there, and it hoped that Rob Drake would not see it. Now the umpires are going to get together. Joe West is the crew chief. He comes in from first base. I think the key here, Jim, is was the play still in motion? Was Billy's body still in motion as he bumped off the bag? And did Laurie force him off the bag in that situation? And I think if, if there is any question at all, that is the question. And obviously, Joe West says, uh, not happening. Hamilton becomes the first Reds rookie since Chris Sabo back in 1988 to steal 30 bases and well on his way to the Reds all time rookie stolen base record of 54 set in 1919 by Bob Besher. He may annihilate that record. Infield in for Frazier as he bounces this ball foul. Besher stole 54. I said 1919. 1909. 54. Yeah. 
He could have that by August 1st. They <laughs> have it by the All Star break at the rate he's going. RBI chance here for Todd. Pitch selection has been the key for Frazier. You saw that take on that pitch that ran in off the plate. You swing at that, your bat shatters and you ground out to third. Reds just had a big crooked number inning in uh, Pittsburgh on Wednesday when they put seven up in the third inning of that game. They've Played it four so far here with only one out and a runner at third base in Billy Hamilton. The Reds sent 12 batters to the plate in that seven run third inning. And that's the kind of inning that just wears the opponent's bullpen out. Muscled into right field. On comes Bautista to make the catch. Billy tagged, but then stays put. Throw came in wide. Hamilton would have scored, but of course you don't know that. Bautista's got a pretty good arm out there. And if that throws anywhere near the plate, Hamilton would have been a dead duck. Hamilton wants to run. He takes off and you. You can read the lips of Hamilton there. What? I guarantee you, Steve Smith said no, no. Shades of St. Louis earlier this year, right? Got it. When he tagged up on that uh, short, short fly ball. Now it's Votto's chance to drive in the run. Reached on an error by the shortstop Reyes his first time. There are sometimes, as a third base coach, you play it aggressively. Sometimes you play it conservatively. The Reds with four runs on the board and Votto coming to the plate. Take my chance with Joe. They shift Votto on the infield. They play him to pull. Not as radical as we've seen some other teams play him on the infield. Yeah, the Nash, most National League teams will put the shortstop on the right field side of second for both Votto and Bruce. I don't understand it with Votto because he hits the ball the other way quite well. Now he'll get a look at a 3 0 pitch from this right hander. Liam Hendricks. I let him swing right here. Lay me a fastball in there. Maybe Votto can put two runs on the board. The Australian right hander against the Canadian first baseman. He does swing at 3 0, hits it down the left field line and out of play. It's the one thing you're going to get from Joey Votto every single at bat. He's going to give you great pitch selection. And even on a 3 0 pitch, if it's not something that he knows he can get the barrel of the bat to, he's not going to swing. Hendricks ready here to throw his 35th pitch of this inning. Ouch. And he walks bottom. First walk by the right hander. He'll face his ninth man now in the frame in Phillips. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight. And as you do, keep in mind that later on we'll have our Miller time moment of the night brought to you by Miller Light. John Gibbons to the mound, and that's going to be all for Liam Hendricks. He will not get through the second inning of this game. Todd Redmond, right hander, has been throwing in their bullpen. It's worked out well for Gibbons and the Blue Jays the first two times that Hendricks went out there, but not today as he is out of the game. Redmond comes on. This is our skyline chili call to the bullpen.
using hashtag Ohio fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Just a reminder a little bit later on we'll have our fan photo of the game. Here we're in the bottom of the second. Big crowd on hand on this Friday night. They've seen some offense. Four nothing Reds is Todd Redmond. The former Red is into the game. Has not allowed a run in his last four appearances. His last 11 innings. So he is throwing the ball as well as he ever has right now. This guy went to spring training with the Baltimore Orioles and in March of last year claimed by the Toronto Blue Jays from Baltimore. He was the fellow that made the start for the Reds in 2012 meaning he was the only pitcher other than the original starters that made a start that year. That was because of a double header. On August the 18th against the Cubs here at Grand American Ballpark he started the game and went three and a third a lot four runs seven hits. Pretty amazing to go through a season with your original five and not have to deviate. Because if not for the double header he would have been just those guys. Yeah. How to play. That fan tried to catch that ball and it almost took his face off. So you had Latos, Bailey, Arroyo, Cueto, and Leak make 161 of 162 starts. That's two Pretty years amazing. ago. Pretty amazing. Otto takes off. Phillips hits it in the air, left center field, sinking fast, sinking fast, and it's down for a hit. Hamilton scores. Votto racing home. He will score. It's been a six run bottom of the second. Melky Cabrera tried in vain to get to that ball and could not do it. Phillips has himself a double. Two runs batted in. 32 on the year. And this has been a six run second. You see the ball come off the bat. You think all right that's an out. But Cabrera could not get to the baseball. And that's what makes Billy Hamilton so spectacular as the red center fielder. He's Hamilton is catching that ball not having to put it on the left fielder. But Rasmus didn't get a break at all in center field. Six nothing now Reds. Bruce who let off this inning with a single. Back for the second time. Sends one high. Deep. And out of the ballpark. Home run. Jay Bruce. Two for two in this inning. His sixth home run of the year. And the Reds have put eight. Eight on the board here in the bottom of the second against Toronto. Came into the ball game thinking about the offense of the Toronto Blue Jays and the Reds have said, what about us? And this is Hammer City. They had hit just one home run since coming off the disabled list. He gave that one a ride three rows deep into the seats. This is the highest scoring inning of the year now for the Reds. That seven spot on Wednesday had been the highest. Now eight here and John Gibbons and his folks in the dugout said I thought this Reds team wasn't hitting very much. Of course things have not been going overly well for the Blue Jays. They come in here having been swept at New York. They've lost nine of their last 13 and while they have been in first place for almost a month that lead at one time was six. Today it's down to a game and a half. And they've gotten some decent starting pitching. The club's just not hitting like they were in May. That is strike three called. Mezzarocco, who had homered earlier, is rung up, and the inning is over. But eight, eight on the board for the Reds in the bottom of the second. Mezzarocco hit a home run. That was a two run shot earlier in the inning. Bruce hit one late. An eight nothing Reds lead.
Indians lead 8-0 over the Blue Jays. I'm Jim Day out here on the Cincinnati Bell Riverboat Deck, and my pleasure to welcome in once again. She's the president and CEO of Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network, one of our partners. And uh, I got to thank you personally because uh, fourth year doing this and a new campaign this year, uh, Jim's Day Off, and uh, despite me, my dorkiness being in it. <laughs> We've gotten some good feedback from it, so I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. You know, Jim, this is a wonderful campaign because you're a great visitor. <laughs> you really are. You're a great visitor. But it's just so much fun. And, you know, here we are tonight in this beautiful ballpark. Look what's going on with the game. We're right here in the heart of... The, the real core and heart yeah. of our city. And it all starts with the energy from the river. And we're right here on the riverboat deck. And... You know, so many of your wonderful new spots this year, kind of wonderful energy comes from our river, like Newport on the Levee and the Aquarium. And I've, I've got to visit some cool places. The Aquarium and the Zoo is one of my favorite spots and uh, going over to northern Kentucky and now even concentrating on the Banks area. What a terrific area. And for people watching out of town and want to visit, there's a lot to do right in this area. There's so much to do. In fact, yes, you just step right outside the ballpark and we've got all these new dining experiences, just the gathering place. You feel the energy and you feel the energy here in the ballpark, but it, it emanates in wonderful circles of energy as we leave our riverfront and we go uptown, like you said, to the zoo. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I have something. I think um, oh, something no. escaped. <laughs> we got a snake. <laughs> is this perhaps? Uh, I think it is. Any resemblance? <laughs> I'm holding a snake right now. And, indeed, I did hold a very large snake at uh, the Cincinnati Zoo. And, uh Boy, we're thankful for them, their partnership as well. And, uh, you know, I want to get some people to CincinnatiUSA.com because there are so many packages on there. And half price, I said half price Reds tickets. Tell them about it. Absolutely. You know, there are so many wonderful home stands, and we have one they're in the, in the midst of now. Fourth of July weekend, we've got Milwaukee in town, and you've got half price Reds tickets. So you book your hotel room, and you get half price tickets from the Reds. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful offer. And then you can also kind of find what tickles your fancy. Check out the zoo. Check out the aquarium. How about the Cincinnati Museum Center with their wonderful Diana exhibition? A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see it before it goes back home to Diana's sons uh, in London. But so many exciting experiences. And you're right, it starts at CincinnatiUSA.com. So log on, folks. I thank this, uh, her right here. And uh, I've got a new snake, another snake here from the Cincinnati Zoo. And we appreciate Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Jim Kelch and Jeff Brantley. Thank you, Jim Day. Thank you, Linda Antis from CincinnatiUSA.com, Cincinnati Regional Tourism Network. Linda always has exciting information, Cowboy, to pass along. You know, I, I only like to see snakes in the in the glass. And Jim said something about snakes. I'm not real big on snakes. You got up and left the booth. You thought one was up here. Yeah, I, I don't like that. Jesse wouldn't let a snake in this booth. He's the guardian of the door, Jesse Jackson. The only snake I like is, you know, not alive. Driven to right field by Melky Cabrera. Bruce on the run. He's not going to get it. It's over his head and off the wall. That's going to be a two base hit for Melky Cabrera. Third hit of the game for the Jays. It comes after Redmond and Reyes were retired on ground balls to start this sitting. Two out double for the former giant Melky Cabrera. Got a fastball. Latos was trying to get the ball in on the hands of Cabrera and it stayed right on the inside part of the plate. A good idea against Cabrera. Just didn't quite get it in there where he wanted it. So the batter now is Jose Bautista. If you're a starting pitcher, you get an eight run lead. You have a big inning like the Reds just had. If you're Matt Latos, you have to force yourself to pitch as though the game is one to nothing. Bautista flied out his first time. You've got to keep the adrenaline up. You've got to continue to not only just throw your fastball, you've got to mix in other pitches as well. 
This is very unsimilar to the game that he threw <laughs> in Milwaukee on Saturday when there was a one nothing Reds lead when he left. So a right. little bit different than that game. I don't know that I've ever seen Matt pitch in a Reds uniform that he didn't bring his A game. Big cut there by Bautista. Two and one. And there is no doubt every time Latos comes to the mound, he's bringing the adrenaline. He may not have his best stuff every day as he throws that ball right by Bautista. It's a tough pitch to hit. Now, when Latos goes to the mound, he's in his third year here as a Red. They Win 65 percent of the time, well, especially in this ballpark. He's 18 and five. The ERA under three. Look at the pitching categories for Latos as a starter at Great American Ballpark. There's not too many that compare with his numbers. Maybe one or two. 14 wins in each of the two years that he has been here. Under at this time, Bautista and over the dugout, third base side. Talking about Matt Latos and his numbers here at Great American Ballpark. That's our IGS bringing the energy feature for tonight. First in ERA, second in winning percentage, third in opponents' batting average here at Great American. Nice to know you have someone to count on like Latos. When he goes to the mound here, well, I, I think of this ballpark as a hitter's ballpark because I think the ball carries well in this ballpark, and I think opposing teams would tell you the same thing. But the the reason there aren't tremendous offensive numbers here are because the five starting pitchers that the Reds have they dominate. Walk issued here by Latos to Batista is his first, and it puts two on with two out. You talk about them dominating, Cowboy. They also, I guess, adjust to pitching in this ballpark. Right. And they do pitch. I mean, I would I would put the Reds five starters up against any other club, either league. Any day. Here's Encarnacion with two on and two men out. This year with runners in scoring position, he's at 244. Funny when you look back at the story of Encarnacion because we talked earlier, traded for Scott Rowland in July of 2009. It was after the 2010 season with Toronto, he was actually designated for assignment by the Blue Jays. It they, wasn't working out with him. They were going to cut him loose, and nobody picked him up. Hammers this ball to left field, and that one will get the Blue Jays on the board. Well, you just know that Encarnacion really wanted to do that here in this ballpark against his old team, and he gets it done. No doubt about it. Three run shot for Encarnacion who also hit one yesterday at Yankee Stadium and it's eight to three. All this coming with two out and nobody on. Fastball trying to get it down and away and you can see where that ball ends up. It's about mid thigh out over the plate and for a power hitter that's right in the honey hole. Lentos touched up for his first runs of the year. He actually had a scoreless stretch going. His last four innings worth of work last year. Six innings in the game Saturday against Milwaukee. So he came into this game with 10 straight scoreless innings plus two tonight. All three runs coming with two outs. You now with Deanna Navarro. Over takes a hop over the glove of Joey Votto and on into right. Four straight now of reach after the first two were retired. Wow, 
Watch the effort that Votto makes here. A great effort as he dives. And right at the last second, that top spin kicks in and hops right over the glove. Yeah, you can dive and catch the ball along the ground, but if you have to dive and then extend upward, <laughs> that's almost impossible. That's what he had to do there. Couldn't you, quite get it. You can do it when you dive to your forehand side or to your glove side, but having to dive and, and backhand the ball, it just doesn't work. Well, after the Reds sent 11 men to the plate in the bottom of the second, scored eight times. The Blue Jays now send their seventh man to the dish here in the third. Brett Laurie had a base hit, infield variety his first time on that ball he hit out near Brandon Phillips. From eight to nothing to eight to three. We're talking earlier about Brett Laurie actually starting the year. As the Toronto third baseman, but when Mazur is tourist went on the disabled list, he's going to miss the year. He moved over to second base. They brought in Juan Francisco, and certainly when Francisco came on immediately, he did a pretty good job for them. But it appears now Laurie is again their guy over at third, right near the screen and on the opposite side of which Mazurako could make a play. And really, if you you look at the numbers for. Francisco when he came over to the Blue Jays he hit the ball really well in the beginning. But once those American League pitchers figured out you know he's not so hot on the breaking ball they fed him a steady diet and he ended up with 64 strikeouts in those first 156 at bats. That's not the kind of ratio you want. Into left. That's a base hit for Laurie. He's two for two. And now five in a row have reached against Latos after the first two were retired. Here comes Jeff Pico, the pitching coach of the Reds, out of the dugout to pay a visit to the mound and Matt Latos. I think when Matt looks back at this tape of this third inning, he's going to see where those pitches are that they're making contact. It may seem to Matt that the ball is down or well located but it's really not down where he was early in this ball game. He was right at the bottom of the kneecaps and for when you've got a good hitting team up there not only do you have to mix it up but you've got to stay down in the zone and keep them from being able to center the baseball. So the visit a quick one by Jeff Pico. Brent's trying to keep the good times going they've come into this game despite the loss yesterday having won six of their last eight. They had pushed the record to the 500 mark after the victory on Tuesday after the victory on uh, Wednesday in Pittsburgh. Dropped one under after the loss yesterday afternoon. Didn't lose any ground to the second place Cardinals yesterday as they were defeated but uh, Milwaukee was a winner in their game so the Reds start today three behind St. Louis for second place seven and a half behind the first place Milwaukee Brewers Milwaukee playing out in Denver against the Colorado Rockies tonight as Rocco did not get his glove turned around on that breaking ball it almost cost an extra base. Fortunately, it was Navarro, the catcher at second. He did not advance. You can see Devin try to smother that instead of turning the glove. Rasmus singled into right his first time. Line drive, but a foul ball. Votto trying to get to it. Joe West trying to get out of the way down there, the first base umpire. There's the crew chief. Joe trying to get out of the way. Not quite as quick as he used to be. The ball was hooking towards him. Votto ended up in his lap. Boy, 
Carter calls a strike on that one. It evens the count at two and two to the former Cardinal Rasmus. Rasmus, a former first round pick by the Cardinals, traded to the Blue Jays late July of 2011. That brought some players over to St. Louis that helped them mightily that year in the World Series. Swing and a miss on a ball down and in. Rasmus doesn't get it. First strikeout for Latos ends the top of the third. In the lunchtime links, check out the gift Brandon Phillips gave a heckling fan in Pittsburgh. Mark Latestu has helped the Blue Jackets build expectations since being traded to Columbus in 2011. And the Cavs have found the man to lead the team next season. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Brought to you by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Drive safe. Spend less. Rerun home run by Edwin Encarnacion gives him 22 on the year 59 runs batted in on the season. He was second in the American League going into action tonight in the home run department trailing only Nelson Cruz at 22. So now the two are tied atop the AL home run list. Schumacher first pitch swinging. And Cabrera will make the play out in left field. And it's not as though that was a terrible pitch. To Encarnacion. The ball was on the outside corner. It was just up a little bit, but that's where Encarnacion has really changed now. The ball that's out over the plate, that's hard, that's straight. He's not missing it. He didn't miss that one. Key, of course, will be when he goes back out there in the fourth to try to bounce back and get it back to the way he had been those first two innings. And you have to wonder if, if sitting that long for Matt affected him. A little bit from a control perspective. You love getting those eight runs, but when your team's scoring, you're sitting. Foul ball by Kozar toward third. Well, we mentioned that the Reds scored seven times in the third inning on Wednesday. They get eight in this game. Last time they did that was uh, how long ago? Well, not that long ago. Last year, they did it April 21st against the Marlins. They scored eight runs in the second. Tonight, eight in the second again. You get two home runs in an inning that aren't back to back more times than not. That leads to some major run scoring. Nice play down at third by Laurie. He'll throw out Cozart at first base for out number two. 
Final line on the starter, Liam Hendricks of the Blue Jays, one and two thirds, six runs all earned, six hits, one walk, one home run ball. He had given up in his two starts this year, three runs in 11 and two thirds. One of those starts against Oakland, the other against Tampa Bay. He gets sidetracked here tonight against the Red Lakes. Tried to tell you, you're a fly ball pitcher in this ballpark, you're going to get hurt. I said he gave up one home run, he gave up two actually, one to Mesoraco and one to Bruce, both in the second, both two run homers. Redmond got the, gave up the home run to Jack. You're right. Todd Redmond has changed his delivery since we saw him last. Pitch for the Reds. He was straight over the top. He has now dropped down low three quarters and occasionally side on. Watch Redmond as he comes to the plate. Ball not quite as close to his head as we saw in a Reds uniform. Trying to get a little extra movement. He gets Latos on strikes, and so for the first time tonight, the Reds go in order. Brought to you by the JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. By Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And kick off your afternoon at B-Dubs with the best seats outside of Brazil this summer. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. That was happening earlier this afternoon at the ballpark. That raccoon was running all around the field until it was finally netted in the Reds dugout. They'll take him back out to the woods where he belongs. Reminiscent of the squirrel in 2011 in St. Louis in the World Series Cowboy. Yeah but that raccoon's a little more dangerous than that squirrel. <laughs> Reminder to catch Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of the Reds during this 2014 season with MLB TV premium the number one live streaming sports service now celebrating 12 years watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices visit Reds .com for details. You know there are folks down there where I live at that you get a raccoon running around like that. They're not going to catch and release they go catch and eat catch and cook. That's right. I believe you. I know you do. <laughs> Some of those tales that I heard early when I arrived here in Cincinnati, I don't know if you were telling the truth or not, but I now believe you. I speak the truth. Mm -hmm. 
Fourth inning baseball from Great American Ballpark. Eight, eight, and zero for the Reds. Three, six, and one for the Blue Jays. This is Munanori Kawasaki leading things off. The only Blue Jays player that did not come to the plate in that three run third. Eleven runs already on the board collectively for the Blue Jays and the Reds. And there's no one out in the fourth. And let's hope Matt Latos is able to get back to the form in which he pitched in the first and second. He had retired the first five batters he faced, then gave up the infield hit to Laurie, the single to right by Rasmus, but the ground out by Kawasaki ended the second. And after the first two were retired in the third, five in a row reached, four of them via the hit. And one, of course, the big home run ball by Encarnacion. Two and two to Kawasaki. The pitcher Redmond is in the nine spot and he is again on deck. Well, I would imagine Redmond will stay in this game as long as he can go. Up and in to. The Japanese player Kawasaki 33 years old. He's an everyday player in Japan from 2003 through 2011. And he takes ball four here he draws the free pass. And that leads off the top of the fourth the second by Latos. Still trying to get back to that release point that he had in the first couple of innings. Redmond bounced out. First baseman of the pitcher covering his first time. He'll show bunt here. Take ball one. Not that he'll be running here, but Kawasaki had some pretty good stolen base years when he was playing for Japan. His best number was 44 in 2009 when he was 28 years old. Pushes it to Votto. Joey, wow, he really thought about second, didn't he? And finally at the end. Gives it to Phillips and gets the force out at or gets the out at first base. Well, you like the aggressiveness by Votto, and you want him to be thinking second base, cut down the lead runner, but that was just not an available play there. Tonight's Reds fan, uh, Reds fans that arrived via the Fan Express came from Calvary United Methodist Church. Here they are arriving at the ballpark tonight. Reservations for the Fan Express are filling up fast. Get on board the Fan Express call the Reds Group Sales Department at 513-765-7600. They get dropped off right outside the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. Into the alley right center field. Bruce closing. Bruce gets it. And spins around and gets it back in in a hurry so much so that Kawasaki who had an idea about possibly tagging had to stay put at second. Well, that's a base running mistake by Kawasaki there. He got too far off the bag. And for Kawasaki, with his speed, if the ball does get by Bruce, he could still have scored from second base on a tag. So now the batter is Melky Cabrera. Cabrera last year signed a two year deal with these Blue Jays in his first year wearing a Toronto uniform a year ago at 279. If you remember 2012 he's with the San Francisco Giants and a key member of that team that went on to uh, win the World Series. But he played that year in only 113 games remember he was suspended at the end of the year. And was not allowed to come back was not allowed to come back. Won the batting title technically at 346, but uh, they wiped it out because of the uh, involvement, the positive test in uh, PEDs. Lifts this ball out to right. 
Bruce will make the play and a zero on the board for the Blue Jays here in the top of the fourth. Family days here at Great American Ballpark, and this Sunday you can see the Reds take on these Toronto Blue Jays in the wrap up of the series. First 8,000 kids, 14 and younger, will receive a kids mascot magnet thanks to Delta Airlines. Plus, make sure to take advantage of the Reach Magazine family deal for tickets 513 381 Reds. Visit select Kroger locations or go to Reds.com. Flash family. It's the only airline I fly. Delta. You do a lot of flying on Delta, don't you? Here to Atlanta, Atlanta to Jackson. And that's our charter company as well for the Reds team. You bet. Billy Hamilton leads things off here in the bottom of the fourth. They take care of me. I show loyalty. What kind of guy you are, Cowboy. <laughs> Second full inning of work for Todd Redmond. He came on, gave up the RBI single to. Brandon Phillips, then the two run homer to Bruce, and then has set down four in a row. He gets Hamilton, then Frazier, then Votto. Billy's double and run batted in in the second on that uh, Texas leaguer. Gives him a nine game hitting streak. Looking to become the second Reds player this year to have a double digit streak, the longest of the year. Turned in by Todd Frazier. He had a 14er. Actually, Mesoraco had an 11, so he'd be the third to get a double digit streak. Melky Cabrera closing on it, and he makes the play, and Hamilton is one for three, and that's the first out here in the fourth. Here comes Frazier. We talked about the home runs that Frazier hit on the road trip that big ninth inning blast on Tuesday that broke the 5 5 tie gave the Reds the uh, the lead and ultimately the win in that game. He also hit a big one on uh, Sunday against the Milwaukee Brewers a two run homer in the fifth inning that broke a 3 3 tie. You know that, that that's the thing that that I love about guys that hit home runs in crucial situations and it seems like more times than not when Frazier hits the ball out of the ballpark it's a difference maker and that's really what you want. Yeah big difference from hitting home runs when you're leading nine to two right. leading thirteen to four. And when the game is on the line. In fact, he is tied now with Andrew McCutcher for the most home runs during the month of June. Frazier at four in April, five in May, and now seven so far in June. Off the leg, it looked like of the pitcher Redmond and out into right field. 
Frazier's going to get himself a base hit out of that. Let's hope he doesn't round the back too far here like he did in that game yesterday against the Pirates when he's ultimately in the 10th inning caught in a rundown. See when that ball hit him. This is a bullet back up the middle. Looked like he caught him in the right outside part of the ankle. No visit from the Toronto dugout. Redmond appears to have shaken it off. Batter now is Joey Votto. Votto still looking for that elusive first home run since coming back off the disabled list. This is his 10th game back. He's reached base in all 10. He has a hit in the first nine. So far, no home runs. In the year, he has six. It's it hard to right field, but Batista is there for out number two. Joey in this game over two with a run scored via the walk. I think you look up and down the, the Reds lineup and the reason they've been so productive offensively is there. It's not just production out of, out of a Billy Hamilton or Joey Votto, Jay Bruce, Brandon Phil. It's all through the lineup. It's Zach Cozart, it's Skip Schumacher, Mezzarocco, Todd Frazier. I mean, it's one through eight. And occasionally the pitcher is doing something. And while the number for the Reds that we talked about earlier, 304 on the road trip, 371 in runners in scoring position on the road trip, it really started two games before that in those final two games against the Dodgers. In the hole now, two strikes. I think the guys are going to the plate now, not hoping to get a hit or wishing they could get a hit. They're expecting to get a hit. And that may not sound like a big difference, but at this level, it's everything. As a pitcher on the mound, you've got to think I'm better than the guy that's standing with the bat at the plate. I'm going to get you out. And the same is true for the guy that stands at the plate with the bat. Oh, I know I can hit this guy. That's how you better be thinking. And that really is how it appears they are thinking now. No doubt about it. Really for the last two weeks. Very aggressive. Guys upset when they're not getting hits, even when the ball game gets out of hand and they've got a great lead. That competitive passion that'll that'll carry you a long way because it's a long year. And that sometimes that adrenaline and passion puts you over the top. Phillips swings and misses at a one two with the runner from first Frazier on the move. Strikeout for Redmond is his third ending the bottom of the fourth.
into the fifth inning. Cowboy, we've been remiss and have not talked about the transaction that the Reds made today. And it's a rather big one involving uh, the bullpen. Here's a look at it. And I don't know that this is for a long time and Singrani going down to AAA. But I think the Reds want him to start. They want him to perfect not only the curveball or slider, however you want to call it, but they want him aggressive with the fastball and, and getting back to where we saw Tony Singrani last year. Jumbo Diaz, a phenomenal spring training, a tremendous year for the Reds last year. And, you know, it, it's time. Uh, Diaz has made a lot of sacrifices. He's gotten himself back into great shape. And Sean Marshall will have surgery on his left shoulder. It'll be a basically a cleanup of the shoulder. It's not going to be designated for the labrum or for the rotator cuff. A technical term they're calling it is a deep riding, right? It sounds worse than it is. Well, it's it's kind of like if you think about it, scrubbing the oil or the dirt off the concrete. You know, you, your driveway, you, you get a bunch of dirt and oil and stuff from the car coming in and out all the time. It's very, it's like pitching the more you throw. And let's face it, Marshall has been around a while. And you're the wear and tear. Sometimes you, you got to have a, a little cleanup or an oil change, however you want to say it. But it's not, it's not a, a major surgery. It's something they can go in arthroscopically. Kind of clean things up and hopefully it will help him. But he goes on immediately the 60 day disabled list, meaning he won't be able to even be eligible to come back till late August, which leads you to believe he's certainly not going to pitch anymore this year. That is ball four. Bautista draws the leadoff walk. And I think a lot of that just depends on what they find when they go into the shoulder. If it is merely just the cleanup, as they're saying, then. There's always a chance to pitch in September, but it all depends on the rehab, how the strength comes back into the shoulder. And right now, uh, for Sean, the shoulder's loose, and it doesn't feel good. It, it doesn't feel the way that, that he feels it should be, like it has in the past. And when you don't feel right and you can't locate the baseball or extend, it makes it tough getting people out. Well, of course, we wish nothing but the best for Sean going into the surgery on Tuesday. Hope there he comes go. out of it well. And we welcome Jumbo Diaz to the uh, to the big leagues. This has been a long, long road for this it, young it man. It really has. And I'm, I'm happy for him. I know he's excited. And I'm sure there are a lot of Dominican guys that, that he's played with growing up. Uh, you're talking about a guy that's 30, 31 years old. And you can't. And you, you stay around and you work in the minor leagues that long and you finally make it. Those of us that played through the minor leagues, we know how difficult it is. You can't be happier for him. Well, he signed originally back in 02 with the Dodgers. He's played in the Rangers, Orioles, Pirates, and now the Reds organization. He signed with the Reds as a free agent before the 13 season. Had a pretty good year down there at Louisville last year. And having a very, very good year again this year. And as you said, we saw him a lot in spring, and he pitched very well out in uh, in Arizona. He was all smiles in the clubhouse prior to the game, looking around, taking it all in. And I think the the big key for for Diaz, you have the opportunity. Now it's time to make the most of it. Brian Price was asked about when he would use him. He said, "Hey." I almost use him in any situation other than the closers role. Well, he's got a mid to upper 90s fastball. It's just a matter of getting it in the zone. Make him swing to that. He's had some very good years in the minor leagues. He's had some bad years. They call him Jumbo for a reason. His name is Jose Diaz. They call him Jumbo because at one time he was a big one. Not so much anymore. He lost almost 100 pounds. And that's what I was talking about about getting get yourself back into better shape. And he credits that with the turnaround he's had particularly in the last couple of years. No doubt. To the shortstop there's one relay 
There's another double play turned by the Reds. It goes 6 4 3. Goes out to Phillips and on Devato. Hit into by Encarnacion. That is a big confidence booster for one Matt Latos. You make a pitch down and away, you get a guy that just hit a three run homer off of you into a double play. Puts you back in an awfully good frame of mind. So each team has turned to double play in this game. The Reds actually came in to today last in the National League and double plays turned with only 48. They get one there. Now here's the former Red Deanna Navarro. Toronto was in a situation where they needed a catcher this year to replace J.C. Arancibia, who was a free agent, a former number one pick by Toronto, but uh, he opted to sign with the Texas Rangers. They're in a uh, spot to need a catcher, and they go out and get Navarro. In this game, Navarro was lined to left, single to right. Came up with the Yankees organization, and he was highly thought of back in uh, his early years there. He was actually an All Star later with uh, Tampa Bay. Going to get himself an opportunity for a hit here, but Schumacher runs it down to retire the side. Good jump on that ball by the Reds left fielder. Nothing across in the fifth for the Blue Jays. Sunday home game. Take advantage of the Reach Magazine family deal and see your red legs in action. One member of the family purchases a full price ticket. They'll get the option to purchase three additional tickets at half price. Plus, every Sunday home game features a kids giveaway. For tickets, you can call 513-381-RED. You can visit select Kroger locations or you can go to reds.com slash family. Glad you're with us here at Great American Ballpark on this Friday night. First of a three game get together against the American League Eastern Division leading Toronto Blue Jays. They come in with a record of 41 up, 33 down, and they own a one and a half game lead over New York in the East, two and a half ahead of Baltimore, but they were just swept at Yankee Stadium, and they're on the tail end of a 10 game road trip in which they went two and two against Baltimore and 0 and 3 in New York. Now here to take on the Reds. 29 straight days that they have been in first place. Well, they've done a little flip-flop 
with the team down in Florida, the Tampa Bay Rays. Some of that note there that said it's the longest they've been in first place since 1993. Of course, 92 and 93 were when they won those back to back World Series. The last of which in 93 ended with a Joe Carter home run. Mitch Williams. Kurt Schilling sitting in the dugout with the towel over his head, not even watching. They have not been to the postseason since that time. This is the 21st year of baseball since then, and they have not smelled postseason baseball since then. Last year, they were 74 and 88. In fact, they've only had one plus 500 year in the last five years. And I think when you look at this Blue Jay ball club, you've got to imagine that they will be in the hunt for a guy like Samarja. A guy like David Price. They'll be in the hunt for some semblance of a starting pitcher. May even be Hamill from the Cubs instead of Samarja. But it surprise you if, if uh, Tampa Bay would deal Price to a team within their own division, though? It would. Yeah, it would. Samarja, I see Samarja or Hamill's as you're talking about. Reds are actually supposed to see Samarja. Next week, you always wonder, will he or will he not still be there? <laughs> exactly. But I think this Toronto club, especially with the offensive prowess that they have, Bruce takes off and he's going to get himself a stolen base as Navarro had to double pump, get that ball out of his glove. For Jay's now eight of nine in stolen bases this year. Jay always seems to get a good jump and pick a good pitch to go on. So one thing about Jay Bruce, he has a tremendous acumen for the game of baseball. There are some guys that are just talented and they just seem to be able to play the game well. Jay does all of the small things well. That's a fair ball. Long throw Lowry out. Throw back. Skips away. Bruce is going to get up and he's going to score. Lowry made a good play on that ball to stop it and get the out at first. But the throw coming back got away. Well, you said it earlier Jim. The issue with Encarnacion at third base was always the throw. It wasn't about just catching the baseball. It was the throw. And when you watch this a tremendous play by Lori, but that ball bounced in between the mound and third base. And Lori even looked Jay back before he threw the ball to first base. Air charge to Encarnacion, second of this game by Toronto. The Reds and the Blue Jays have been battling for the best defensive team in the big leagues this year. They are second to the Reds in terms of. Fewest errors. The Reds came in with 27. Toronto second, along with the Angels and Tampa Bay, with 36. That goes to show you just how well the Reds have played fielding the ball this year. I think you go back in history, it's tough to find a team that catches and throws the ball at all positions as well as the Reds do. They had a stretch earlier this year. They went 10 straight games without an error, talking about the Reds. And they're on a current streak now of nine straight games without an error. Knock on wood, we don't want to jinx them. And I think the biggest reason for that is the Reds take pride in the fact that they play great defense. Smash to the right of the second baseman. Kawasaki comes up with it. Schumacher is retired. I mean a big league club normally is is good defensively but I think you could put the, the Reds in a category of great defensively and the first knock that anyone will say when you talk about Reds defense is they don't turn a whole lot of double play well they've got a starting staff that strikes out the world and that has a little something to do with Kozar with two men out. 
See that sign to the left of the screen there it says Hamilton Bobble, July the 12th. Here's a guy who's played half a season in the big leagues. One half season, really technically not even a half season yet this year. And they've already got a bobblehead set up for him. That shows the impact that he has had on this team. Big time excitement. I think folks come to the ball game. They love to see Billy Hamilton in the leadoff spot and do his thing throughout the game. The game starts with an exciting player on the field or in that leadoff spot. And then you've got a Raldis Chapman that comes in to finish it up. And goodness knows everybody loves to watch the big Cuban left hander come onto the field because that normally means the Reds have a lead and they're going to see some fast balls that nobody else in the game can throw. Well, we just saw Billy sitting there in the dugout, 30 steals, second in the league, nine game hitting streak now. Started the day at 277. Evaluate his season in terms of has he done what you thought he would do? Has he underperformed what you thought he would do? Or has he done better than you thought he would do so far? He's done better than I thought he would do. I if agree you, with if you. If you had to ask me if Hamilton hits 250 in June, would you be happy in a 30 second minute? I, I think the the thing that impresses me the most, and Joel Luckup and I were talking about this earlier, is that Billy adjusts the opponents adjust to where he's moved to and then he'll adjust again. I, I think he continues to improve his game and, and I just think it, it tells you the kind of baseball player he is. He's very intelligent. He understands the game and he continues to work on his game. He's not satisfied with the status quo. He's very very confident without being cocky at all. Right. He, he understands what he does well, but he under, also understands, and this is probably the biggest reason that he is moving towards greatness, he understands what he doesn't do well, and that's what you work on. There are a lot of players that come to the big leagues, they do one or two things well, but they don't understand where their, their holes are at the plate in their swing or what kind of issues that they have when they're on the mound or the tendencies that they have. And if you don't adjust at this level, sooner or later the league will catch up to you and they'll beat your brains out. Goes out in the air to left field and Melky Cabrera will handle this to retire the side. The Reds get a run. We head to the sixth, 9 3 Cincinnati. I got like 330 and I come in this year to spin training with 278 like I feel like so good right now because I can go back to back day easily like and compete in the mouth like throw my pitches the way I want and I feel like more stronger like when they go in the game.
on the air. There we go. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Day. Uh, after 12 minor league seasons, 340 minor league games, indeed, Jumbo Diaz is in the major leagues. And I tell you what, he was just talking about his weight there. 330 pounds at one point last year and down to 278. He talked about it. He wasn't even able to go back-to-back -back days, and now he can go two innings. It's a whole new Jumbo Diaz. And, guys, I've been around this game a long, long time, and I'm not sure I've seen a clubhouse more excited to see a guy come up from the minor leagues than Jumbo Diaz. He's been in five different organizations, and even on Twitter today, his former teammates were celebrating Jumbo Diaz coming to the major leagues. The guy's always got a smile on his face. They says he's always happy. He's always thankful. And his locker was up. Unbelievable with the amount of players around it. They are happy just as much as he is. Well, you know, you see a guy like that who spent all that time in the minor leagues, and you're thrilled for him to uh, to come up here. We've been talking about him really for a couple of weeks. He's been doing so well down there. There have been pitchers that have been a little shaky, let's face it, up here on occasion. And you look down there, you see the numbers that Diaz has put up, and you think, let's get this guy up here. Let's give him a shot. You know, it, it's always nice. As a big league player, when you've been around for a while, to see a guy come to the big leagues that you know has really, really had to grind it out. Because we all have to fight for it to get here, but once you're here, you kind of forget about that a little bit. And I think that is one of the reasons that all of the players were so happy for Diaz because they remember what it was like to try to get here. You're riding the buses, you're playing in uh, stadiums all over the country in, in minor league fashion. It, it's nothing like playing at this level. But I'll say this, a guy like Jumbo Diaz can really give a team a boost. Very similar to what we saw with Yasiel Puig at the Dodgers last year. You get a guy up that's in the big leagues for the first time, man, it, it, it almost rekindles that young energy and it kind of takes the the monotony of the day to day out because you're so happy for an individual coming to the big leagues. I'm not saying this game is going to stay this way. It very well could. It's a 9 3 lead for the Reds now as the leadoff man Laurie strikes out. But would this be the kind of game and an ideal situation that you'd like to get Jumbo into. Yes. Yes. And I would imagine that if it does stay the way that it is right now, uh, you may see Diaz come in after Matt Leto. I guess in an optimum situation, you want to get these guys in, particularly when they're going to come in and make their debut as soon as possible so they don't have to sit around and keep thinking and about, think it. about it. How long did you have to wait before you were called up, before you got into the game? Called up, pitched the next day. So not like today, but the following day. Yeah, I, f I flew into San Francisco when I first got called up. We flew to Atlanta that night. I pitched that day. So you had to wait one day. You sat not, e not even that. In your very first game. My very first okay. game, I okay. pitched. So that would be like Diaz getting in tonight. Yeah, because I, when I got called up, I wasn't put on the roster that day. They wanted me there in Atlanta, but or in San Francisco, because we were flying to Atlanta that night. Gotcha. That we, we were at the end of a homestand, and when I got to the big leagues, I basically just took my suitcase that I brought from Phoenix and put it on the plane. I didn't even unpack. Rasmus in the hole one and two as he tries to bunt that ball. And I'll tell you this, Jim, I pitched in Atlanta that day. I don't remember a whole lot about that game because I was so nervous. Matter of fact, I was so nervous, I couldn't even spit. I remember you saying that when you went to the ballpark in San Francisco to leave that day, and when you were in the ballpark in Atlanta and you walked onto the field in your uniform, first time ever. You'd never been in a big league ballpark never, before. Never been in a big league ballpark. And all of a sudden, not only am I in a big league ballpark, I'm in Atlanta, a team that I grew up watching on TBS. Sure. And you're living the South, that, that's on all the time. And well, they were America's team yeah. back in those days. I thought I was going to hyperventilate. Toward the alley in left center field, this is the second hit of this game for Rasmus. Schumacher cuts it off, but Colby Rasmus. 
Going to get himself a stand up double. That is the seventh hit of this game now for the Blue Jays. Looks like a change up, an off speed pitch that was up in the strike zone. It's the only time that Matt has gotten hit is when the ball has been elevated. I mentioned Rasmus, he has been on the disabled list. He had a right hamstring strain activated on the 19th. Actually activated the two days ago. This is his third game. Since being activated from the DL he now has five hits and 11 at bats in those three games. And I think as we saw in the beginning of the season back in April. All of the starters the regular starters for the Reds that second start. Was a major grind you're so sore from the first start. Uh, the fatigue of the body after all that adrenaline and overextension. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that from from Matt here tonight. You just push through it. Uh, you continue to try to make pitches. It may not be the greatest start. But you try to win the ball game. He is now with. Munanori Kawasaki. We will walk back in the fourth inning. Reds thanks to an eight run second inning their largest single output of the year lead nine to three. That the 87th pitch of this game so it's one more than he threw in the six innings in that first start last Saturday yeah, and I would imagine that Brian Price. Wanted to bump it up probably 10 or 15 pitches in this start. But just to get Matt pushed towards that. 100 pitch mark and continue to. To move him up. Well he's due up first. In the bottom of the sixth inning and I guess it depends a lot. Or does it. On how the rest of this inning goes as to whether he bats or not. Well I, I would say that this is probably Matt's. Last inning. But I think. Brian Price would like to get him through this sixth inning, uh, especially with the lead that, that the Reds have. And going back to the overextension of the bullpen, not only in the extra inning game, but the other two games there in Pittsburgh. Back to back strikes after. Falling behind three and zero for Latos now three and two. This is a key batter for Matt. You've got Redmond, the pitcher, standing in the own deck circle, and more than likely he's going to bat for himself simply because Gibbons doesn't want to burn up his bullpen on the first day. They sit in the right by Kawasaki will send the runner over to third Rasmus so back to back hits by the Blue Jays. Pitcher spot was due up. And with two on. And one man out. They will not now send Redmond to the plate. Instead they will go to the bench and Adam Lind. An infielder. Will bat. Or Todd Redmond. And I think if you're given. Kawasaki makes it out. You don't do what you're doing right now. But with a chance of a guy coming to the plate. They could hit a three run home run and put you right back in this game. You take your chances. Reds now have double barrel action out in the bullpen. Lefty Manny Parra right hander Logan Andrusik up and throwing under the watchful eye of Mac Jenkins. Jeff Pico, the Reds pitching coach, out just making sure that Matt is fine, not only physically, but mentally. And when you look out on the, the escort radar gun, Matt's velocity is down. He's been 88, 89, sometimes up to 92. But we're used to seeing Matt in that 93 to 95 mile an hour mark as we did in Milwaukee. 
As I said earlier, it's a grand out start. So Adam Lind walks to the plate. He bats for Redmond. He's hitting 328. Three home runs, 18 runs batted in, including two hits and six at bats off the bench. And he strokes a base hit into right. Rasmus will score. And it's a nine to four game. As Rocco wanted the ball down and away, the ball ends up down and in. And Adam Lynn put the bat hit to the baseball. Drew Hutchison, who's a starter for the Blue Jays, is now taken over at first base as a pinch runner for Adam Lind. This may be Matt's last batter. Hey. Both guys in the bullpen are ready. Melky Cabrera in the on deck circle. Serious yellow hammer right here starts up around the hands, and you see where Mazzarocco caught that ball. Houdini pitch. Jim, that if Matt gets out Reyes, depends on how he gets him out. If he strikes him out, it may allow him to face Cabrera. His 96th pitch there evens a count of two and two. One out double by Rasmus to left center. Single to right on a 3 2 pitch by Kawasaki. A first pitch pinch hit single to right by Adam Lind, who then was lifted for a pinch runner. Lind has had a bruised right foot and hasn't started for the last five days. Toward the mound and on to first. For Latos, he had a play there at second base. Yes, he did. So the runners move up. Now at second and third with two out. And here comes Brian Price. Yeah, I think when you're when you're grinding so hard as Matt is here tonight, sometimes you just you just brain cramp. I think Matt's just thinking about outs. Latos jogs off after 97 pitches and five and two thirds. It's a nice hand from the crowd as the door opens up in the bullpen for the Reds and a new pitcher will enter this game for Cincinnati. It's the left hander Manny Parra.
before the start of every game. That's with Reds Live, presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. And of course, right here on your exclusive home of Reds Baseball, Fox Sports Ohio. We'll have it for you tomorrow here. It's an earlier start, remember. Late afternoon game tomorrow. It starts at 410. That means Reds Live gets underway at 330. No Matt Latos, 87 pitches, six innings at first go round. 97 pitches here today, five and two thirds. Those runners on still his responsibility. And the new man to the hill is the lefty Manny Parra. And the switch hitter Cabrera will turn around and hit from the right side. Better hitter left handed. Seven home runs lefty four right handed but a 265 hitter right handed. He's one for three in this game. His hit came as the double back in the third. He's now hitting four straight, but nine of his last 11. It's a big out right here for the Reds. He gets a hit here. It's a 9 6 ball game. And blocked by Mezzarocco on that first pitch from Parra. Get back within three runs after being down eight to nothing. You give the Blue Jays a little bit of life, and you don't want to do that. Reds led eight nothing after two, thanks to their largest single inning output this year. Nine to four now. I mean, no breathing easy if he gets a base hit here. Two and zero. Oh. Last year with Manny Parra, he was able to get his breaking stuff over for strikes, and that really helped his fastball and the changeup. Breaking ball is down, as you've seen the first two here. Three balls and no strikes to Cabrera with Jose Bautista on deck. Folks are starting to get a little restless in the stands right now. These Reds fans, they, they know the difference. Get some guys coming to the plate that can hit the ball out of the ballpark, and you load the bases. Oh, Nelly. Andrusic still throwing in the bullpen. Wow. He wasn't close on any of those four pitches as he walks Melky Cabrera to load him up, and Brian Price immediately back out of the dugout. Andrusic throwing in the pen. Manny Parr throws four pitches all out of the zone, and he will exit this game. And this is a pitching change that Brian did not want to have to make. You bring a guy in left handed to face a guy like Cabrera, you want strikes, you want to make him swing the bat. And Parr was unable to do that. So Andrusic enters as a third pitcher of the inning.
Major League Baseball All-Star Game as the best of the National League take on the best of the American League's elite. Don't miss the action coming up Tuesday, July the 15th on Fox. Logan Andrusik, he's really started to throw the ball a lot better. And when a guy has a tough start, obviously, you, as a fan, you're expecting to put zeros up from then on out because he had a tough start. Well, that's that's way over expectation. He's thrown the ball really well. Last 10 times out, he's got a 1.38 ERA and 13 innings pitched. He's got a heavy duty task for himself and the Reds. For this big fella at the plate, because he is thinking downtown Freddie Brown. In case you're wondering, Batista in his career, four grand slams, but none since 2010. He stands in against Logan Andrusic. First pitch strike. Just a bit outside. Off the plate again, and now it's two and one. In case you're wondering, yes, one time Andrusik has faced Batista. He retired him. Here's Logan's numbers career wise with the bases loaded. Walking in a run here is Andrusik. Relief pitchers have come on and thrown eight pitches, seven out of the strike zone. The Encarnacion is on deck. He right now represents the tying run in the hole, rather uh, on deck. Ball four. Oh, they check it at first, and Joe West says yes, he went around. So it's three and two. Logan Andrusik and the Reds, very fortunate right there. That was about as borderline as you can get. But he went. Runners will be on the move. Ball four. That makes it a nine to five game and will bring the tying run here in the sixth inning to the plate. Here's our Mazda pitch by pitch. The first pitch is a fastball from Andrusik. Then he starts to try to nibble on the outside part of the plate with both the fastball and the cutter. When he did come inside, he missed down and in. And the last thing that you want to do against the power hitter is get behind in the count and let him sit on a fastball. Now it's Encarnacion. After two straight walks, he flails away at the first one and doesn't get it. Three walks tonight for Batista. That is now 58 walks. That leads the world. Their version of our Joey Votto in terms of the walks.
He got under it, pops it up. Will it stay in play? It will not. One and two. Edwin Encarnacion, tonight's steel power tool performer. Most home runs since 2012. One he hit earlier, number 100. He and Miguel Cabrera, the Tigers, now sitting there at the top of that list with 100. Since 1912, I think it's 2012. Pretty good sluggers right there. Former Red Adam Dunn right on that list. Breaking ball, he got it in the air, but it's playable. Schumacher handles it. Inning over. Good comeback. Well, Dursic walked Batista with the bases loaded, but he gets Encarnacion. It's a four-run game. Eight runs, second inning for the Reds tonight gave them an early advantage of eight nothing. They scored eight runs, had seven hits in the inning, drew a walk, a pass ball help, the stolen base help. And they led eight nothing after two, but now it's a nine-five game, only a four-run lead for Cincinnati. Logan Andrusik, who was the third pitcher of the inning, now is lifted, and Roger Bernardina will pinch it against a new pitcher, Cowboy Chad Jenkins, young right-hander. Been up in 2011 and 2013. Started a little bit. Now pitching out of this Toronto bullpen. And he likes the sinking fastball as well. He gets Roger Bernardina as the pinch hitter to start the frame. Reyes will throw him out here. And that's the way the bottom of the sixth gets going. Bernardina, he didn't see much time at all on the road trip. Played defensively in the Pittsburgh series, had one at bat in the Milwaukee series. He's out the batter now, Billy Hamilton. Definitely not the same Roger Bernardina that we saw in spring training. And granted, when you're having to hit off the bench instead of getting regular playing time, that is a tough, tough job. Here's Billy Hamilton. This game one out of three with a run scored and a run driven in and his 30th stolen base of the year. He trails only D. Gordon of the Dodgers for the National League lead. D. Gordon with 37, Billy now with 30. 
Reds have Jumbo Diaz warming up down in the bullpen. Imagine that heart of his is doing right now, Cowboy. I'd say it's beating pretty quick. A note here. We're talking about your debut, August the 5th, 1988. A couple of innings against uh, the Atlanta Braves. One hit, seven batters faced, all zeros other than that. Did a pretty good job. Yeah, that's because I had a good defense because they were smoking the ball. Our good friend Rich Cope writes in and gives us that note. I had 3 and 0 on Andres Thomas, who was the shortstop at the time. For the Braves, that was the first batter I faced. <laughs> he swung three and zero. I was so happy because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get it over the plate. Hard hit ball by Hamilton and bobbled by the second baseman Kawasaki. That will be his first and the third error of the game for Toronto. This is the the team along with Tampa Bay, one of the best fielding teams in the American League. You're taught as an infielder work from the ground up and you could see Kawasaki's glove. It was up above his waist and he tried to work from that position down and it doesn't work too well. They've had the fielding error by Reyes the throwing error by Encarnacion and now the fielding error by Kawasaki giving Frazier an opportunity with a runner on and one out. Todd has a pair of hits tonight, but will fly out here to center and Colby Rasmus. Reds fans, if a Reds home run hits the Toyota sign during tonight's game, Andrew Gallimore from Liberty Township, Ohio, will win this beautiful new Tundra that's on display here at Great American Ballpark. Register for your chance to win in an upcoming game by visiting your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. There you see it. Displayed right above the Reds bullpen way out in left center. Hamilton going and Votto rolls this ball easily to the first handled by Encarnacion and the inning is over. Game this Wednesday night. Meet Fox Sports Ohio girl Christine and try your luck with the home run derby challenge and have the chance to win some great prizes. It's all happening this Wednesday at 8 at the Tin Roof in Cincinnati. The team will be in Chicago. We'll have the game here on Fox Sports Ohio. It'll be the wrap up of that series. Reds and the Cubs. You can participate. Home run derby challenge at the Tin Roof Wednesday night. 30 appearances this year, 340 minor league appearances, and tonight 
Jumbo Diaz makes appearance number one Jeff Brantley in the big leagues. You can hear Reds fans cheering after seeing the big board put his name up and underneath it major league debut. Now the key is how you handle the big league adrenaline. And I'm here to tell you that's some serious adrenaline. Give us an idea of what he throws Jeff. Hard fastball mid to upper 90s. He's got a split fingered fastball and a slider to go with it. But the key for Diaz is that fastball. And if he's able to command that down in the strike zone because it has sinking movement as well. He'll be very successful. He comes into this game as the fifth. Fourth Reds pitcher Latos five and two thirds five runs. Manny Parr one batter a walk Logan Andrusik two batters a walk and the final out the fly ball to left and now Diaz is into the game. He'll get Deanna Navarro as his first major league opponent. Six four two seventy five ish. Jose Jumbo Diaz. 98. That was a smooth 98 right there. There's never been any doubt that this kid could throw. And I call him a kid because he's making his major league debut. 18 saves and 19 save chances at Triple A Louisville this year in 30 outings. Well, he does not look like the effort that he gives to get it to 98. He's a big fella. And he gets those hips turned and more times than not that ability to throw the ball that hard is God given. You're born with it. A la Chapman. Thank you. In the left Schumacher there and the leadoff man retired. Jumbo can take a big deep breath. That first out is big, but you still feel your heart beating so fast that your shirt feels like it's moving. You feel like everybody in the dugouts and in the stands can hear your heart beating because you sure hear it in your ears. Nice deep breath after the first out. Diaz last worked for the Louisville team on Wednesday, two thirds of an inning in a home game down at Louisville Slugger Field in a save against the Durham Bulls. Has not a lot of run in the month of June. Ball hit in the right field deep. Bruce going back, and that ball leaves the park. Brett Laurie, an opposite field home run. His third hit of the game makes it a three run contest at nine to six. Here's our Chula hot sauce flame thrower. 98 miles an hour, but you see where the pitch was. It's up a little bit and out over the plate. And that's brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce, our flamethrower at 98 miles an hour. When a guy throws that hard, you just try to get the bat there and let his velocity do the rest. 12th home run of the year for Laurie. 97th of the season by the Blue Jays. Tops in the big leagues. Now it's Colby Rasmus. Pair of hits tonight, a single and a double. Blue Jays have now out hit the Reds in this game 10 9. Reds still on a three run lead at 9 to 6. 
case you're wondering about Diaz, he has gone more than one inning on a couple of occasions this year down in Louisville. Twice he went two innings. Last time he went two was uh, 10 days ago. He went two innings on the 10th of June at Pawtucket. Off man fly to left. Laurie the opposite field home run. One and two to Rasmus. Not too many hitters in triple A ball that catch up to a 98 mile an hour fastball and hit it out of the ballpark the opposite way. Like Jumbo had given up just one home run ball in triple A this year. That ball starting middle away and it's running away from the left hander. With Lori, that ball started middle away and ran back to the bat head. Now it's Munanori Kawasaki. Base hit his last time to right after walking in the fourth, so he's been on twice. Only his seventh game of the year, Kawasaki came in hitting 190. He spent most of this year at the AAA level with the Buffalo Bisons. Juan Francisco, former Red, has moved out into the on deck circle. Sergio Santos now, a right hander, starts to throw in the Toronto bullpen. Red's pen is quiet at this juncture. You can see Mazzarocco look out to Jumbo Diaz and basically give him body language that would suggest. Take a deep breath, big fella. Take a deep breath. Slow yourself down a little bit. Even in this situation, you feel like you're slowing down, but you are really jumping. Can't help it. Outside corner pitch there, and it's two and two. Kawasaki is the kind of hitter who's going to try to make you throw as many pitches as possible. So you get two strikes, he's probably not going to swing. Choking up on that bat. See that ball sweep all the way out of the strike zone. And 
There is no doubt. Kawasaki is just getting the bat to the ball before it enters the mitt of Mazzarocco. Making him work here for that third out, isn't he? He is cap. He is late with a capital L A T E. Ninth pitch of the at bat right here. Kawasaki, the longtime Japanese player. On his second year here in the big leagues. Battles against Jumbo Diaz making his major league debut. Field made it a three run game at nine to six. Reds have led since that eight run second. And a bouncer toward the middle and under the glove of Cozart. He couldn't quite get to it. Kawasaki kept fouling off pitch after pitch and finally singles up the middle. He's been on three times now tonight. Trying to come in with a fastball, and instead of it being in on the corner, the ball runs back to the middle. And Kawasaki just trying to protect the plate, and just happened to hit it right back up the box. Here comes Jeff Pico out, and what do you think they're going to be talking about? <laughs> How to pitch to Juan Francisco. Right. But Diaz has not thrown a whole lot of breaking balls. And I would imagine that Diaz is familiar with the swing of Juan Francisco. Francisco, of course, the former Red, hit one of the longest home runs ever in this ballpark, Red American ballpark. Ironically enough, against the Toronto Blue Jays back in 2011. Out of the ballpark it went. Jay describing it to Joey in the dugout. That was in 2011. Francisco this year hitting 240 with 11 home runs for the Jays, 28 runs batted in. Open three is a pinch hitter, but as Cowboy was talking about, his strikeout total 64 punch outs and 154 at bats this year. About one every two and a half times up. But he gets ahead now, 2 0. Oh. Make him a better hitter when you get behind in the count. No doubt. Juan Francisco is just sitting on a fastball that's middle in. See that wide open stance. Signed way back in 2004 was Francisco by the Reds. Traded to Atlanta for J.J. Hoover April 1st of 2012. Traded by the Braves to Milwaukee. Middle of the season last year. Released by the Brewers at the tail end of spring training this year and then signed April 2nd by Toronto. His best year with the Reds and he had a couple of opportunities, but every time it seemed like there was a chance for him to play, he was hurt as well. Right. He had 18 home runs in 2013 between Atlanta and Milwaukee. That's his best. In a big spot right here with a runner on, two out in the seventh. 
into the corner in left field, and that ball is fair, and that's a pinch hit to Ron Homer. Juan Francisco, pinch hit, two run shot right down the left field line. And this is a one run game. His 12th home run of the year. This is the spot that the Reds have struggled in that middle relief department. Fastball up. You throw it up and they make contact. It's got a chance, especially when you throw as hard as Diaz does. Three home runs now in this game, two of them by former Reds. In fact, that is the sixth career home run by Juan Francisco against Cincinnati. Most versus any team. That he is uh, hit against. Now it's the top of the order and Jose Reyes. He knows the home runs out. And looks right into the Reds dugout. And a couple of teams ago since he wore the red uniform. He had a couple of former Reds in Encarnacion and Juan Francisco. They both had home runs here tonight. So it was once an eight run lead. All but one run of that has disappeared. But it looked like Diaz was going to get the final out of the inning against Kawasaki. Battled him. And the pinch hit home run. Now the tying run comes to the plate. Only the second pinch hit home run the Reds have given up this year. The other, of course, was the grand slam by Ike Davis in New York. In the air to center, and Hamilton will handle it. And the inning is over. But three cross the board. Stretch time in Cincinnati, a one run game. Beginning with the Reds taking on the Blue Jays right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Then it's baseball night in America on Fox as the Tigers battle the Indians. That's at 7. And on Fox Sports 1 at 10, the Rangers take on Mike Trout and the Angels. Our MLB triple header begins at 3.30 with Reds Live right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Big day of baseball 
tomorrow. And it all begins right here at GABP. Who would have thought after an after that second inning, eight runs on the board that we would be talking about a one run game. And we've still got a little bit to play here. Seventh inning. I'll make a suggestion. Okay. Red might want to score a few more. It might take that. Yes. But luckily, the way they've been hitting the ball, it's not out of the realm of possibility. No, it's not. Phillips leads it off against the new pitcher, Sergio Santos. He has spent some time on the disabled list this year for the Blue Jays. He had some right elbow issues. Been a little over a month on the DL. Santos throws hard. He's got good stuff. He has just not been able to put the results together thus far. Laurie at third gobbles up this ground ball and Phillips is retired to start the bottom of the seventh. From what I've seen from Brett Laurie here tonight. That dude is a gamer. I like that guy. Puts together some solid at bats and he is slick at third. We're seeing him at third tonight. He's played a lot of second base for this team this year. Right now he's the guy. They're going to give Kawasaki the opportunity to play some second. That means Lowry, uh, Lowry will be over at third. And as you say, he's been solid down there. Here's Jay Bruce. Two run homer back in the eight run second. He had a single and a home run in that inning. Sergio Santos, a former first round pick by the Diamondbacks back in 2002. Been with the Twins, he's been with the Giants, he's been with the White Sox. Traded to the uh, Blue Jays from the White Sox, December of 2011. So this is his third year with the Jays. Encarnacion, he will take it himself. And there are two out. The way they were playing Jay there, they were playing him to pull as most teams do. The Santos was feeding him a steady diet of the breaking bull. Here's a guy, Santos. We talk about elbow surgery versus shoulder surgery. He went under the knife for shoulder surgery. July the 25th 2012 pitched in 29 games last year. I know there are all sorts of different shoulder surgeries. When you talk about of shoulder surgery none versus, of them good yeah versus elbow you'd rather have the elbow right. Yes. They've come a long way in that process with the elbow. Shoulder. It's a little different story. Pre shoulder surgery Santos was a closer in 2011 with the White Sox did a pretty good job for them at 30. And the Rocco hits one hard to left field slipping out there was Cabrera going after that ball. This is going to be an extra base hit for Devin his second of the night to go along with that home run he hit back in the second inning. There's a base runner with two outs. Well, how many times have we seen tonight where a fastball that started off the plate away and it runs back to the middle right on the barrel of the bat whether it be Reds or whether it be 
Blue Jays. Tenth double of the year for Mezzarocco now gives the Reds a chance. Leading by a run at 9 8 here in the bottom of the seventh. Schumacher has a hit tonight. He's one for three. Well, this would really be something if Schumacher was able to put the ball into the outfield on a line and score Mazzarocco. Well, many two out rally here. We take it. Low strike call there from Alan Porter goes the way of Santos. Jonathan Bronson now up and throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. That double by Mezzarocco, the first Reds hit since the Frazier single back in the fourth. Schumacher disagrees with that call of Alan Porter. Put him in the hole one and two. Let's see what Fox Track says about that. Lower part of the zone. Breaking ball hard toward the middle. Kawasaki with a diving stop and throw. That saves a run for Toronto and ends the bottom of the seventh. Terrific play. But Mooney Nori. Kawasaki, eighth inning upon us, one run game. Ballpark, five of them. Two on the red side. This one by Mezzarocco, a two run shot as part of that eight run second. Later in the frame, another two run blast. This one by Jay Bruce, his sixth of the year. It was eight nothing Reds after two. And Carnacion, the former Red, hit a three run bullet in the eighth. Uh, pardon me, in the uh, third. Then Brent Laurie. He gets in on the action against Jumbo Diaz, as does Juan Francisco, the former Red, a pinch hit shot into the left field corner, his 12th of the year. Jumbo all told, three runs, three hits, two of them homers, and one innings worth of work. And a one run game now at 9 8 Cincinnati. Our Honda game summary sends us into the top of the eighth. Into the game, Jonathan Broxton. It was not his day yesterday in Pittsburgh. He just didn't appear to have the velocity cowboy that we normally expect to see. It really looked like his arm was tight. I'm very surprised that he's out there tonight, to be honest with you. He gets Melky Cabrera to lead it off. But there's sometimes when you're pitching out of the bullpen. 
You may have to pitch three or four days in a row. I can remember pitching seven days in a row. Felt like my arm was going to fall off. How many days did you need off after pitching seven straight? Couple. This is the 24th appearance for Broxton this year. 2 0 record, a 0 4 0 ERA. He worked in that game yesterday in Pittsburgh, two thirds of an inning. Broxton came on to work the ninth. He walked a couple of batters, and after he walked Starling Marte, Brian Price turned to a role as Chapman to try to send the game into extra innings, and Chapman did it with a called third strike against Andrew McCutcheon. I think that pitch took McCutcheon by surprise. It was right down the heart of the plate about waist high, wasn't it? It was a changeup, and McCutcheon started to swing, realized the ball wasn't there yet, and just kind of buckled it. <laughs> you get buckled with a changeup, you just got flat food. Pretty good matchup right there, wasn't it? Chapman against McCutcheon. Melky Cabrera tonight, one for three with a walk. Broxton gets a strike in there. One of the things he's been able to do this year, talking about Broxton, is get the ball over the plate. He's walked nine and 22 and a third. A couple of those came yesterday, but he's had, I would say, almost impeccable control this year. It really has. A three and zero oh to three and two. And I, I think. Jonathan Broxton, he's been around the block. He's closed. He's pitched in some heavy duty pressure situations. He understands how to pitch. He doesn't feel the pressure, even though it may be there. He understands that you've got to throw the fastball as well as the breaking ball for a strike. And for the most part, he stays out of the middle of the play. Note in the Toronto Blue Jays game notes prior to the game that the Blue Jays had scored three runs or less in nine of their last 13 games, averaging two and a half runs a game. They've at least temporarily broken out of that tonight. Tonight would not qualify for that note. Bit low by Broxton. Cabrera draws his second walk. The Blue Jays have the tying run on. Box track says just a bit down. Six walks now. Six walks by Reds pitching. Take a look at our AT&T fan photo of the game. Isaiah. There you go. Thank you for that. Remember, if you want to send in a photo, hashtag Ohio Fan Photo. Have your opportunity to have your picture up on our AT&T Fan Photo of the game. Look like former Red, now Pirate, Edmondson Volquez. I was standing. thinking the same thing. You're exactly standing right. in the picture with Isaiah. Kind of froze me for a second. I saw that picture. I said, "That looks like Edmondson Volquez." It was. Volquez on Wednesday. That was the uh, the worst we've seen him by far, wasn't it? Against Cincinnati since the trade. He lasted two and a third innings. He just couldn't find the strike zone. And when he did, the Reds dropped the hammer. That was that seven run third inning. Broxton gets through this inning with the lead intact. He's going to have earned it. This is Bautista, Encarnacion on deck, and then Navarro. Nine eight Reds in the eight. Bautista tonight flied out against Latos in the first. Since that time, walked in the third by Latos, walked in the fifth again by Matt. And walked by Andrusic with the bases loaded in the sixth, producing his 49th RBI.
Dustin McGowan, Casey Jansen, Jansen the closer, throwing in the Toronto bullpen. To the shortstop. There's one. Got them both. That is huge. Gets the ground ball on the sinker. Phillips turns it over with quick hands. Goes Art Phillips. And there's your defense. And it arrives just <laughs> at a very needed time. A team leading 10th double play hit into by Bautista this year. And boy, hell oh boy, it could not have come at a better time. Second of the night by the Reds. Now it's double E. We run blast back in the third. Got the Blue Jays on the board. He ended a double play back in the fifth inning. Same way, six four three. Put a little extra on that one. That one came in at 95 miles an hour. He didn't throw any of that hard yesterday, did he? Matter of fact, he's throwing his slider today as hard as he threw his fastball yesterday. Well, as you said, sometimes there are days like that. Where you just don't have it, and you just got to create pitches, and you've got to get outs. Nobody said it was going to be easy. A walk to Cabrera to start the inning against Broxton. The big double play ball, 6 4 3, hit into by Jose Bautista. And now it's Encarnacion against Jonathan Broxton. Darted away at the end. Thinking fastball. Got the slider. Reds in their half of the eighth. Those aren't the pitcher spot, and then Hamilton. We can get through this right here. It'll be missile time come the night. Oh, I don't know. Full count. Navarro on deck. Tying run on and Carnacion. Two walks in the inning by Broxton. That's seven walks now in this game by Reds pitching. Fourth time this year that the Reds have walked seven in a game. The last time they did it was three days ago against Pittsburgh. Here's Navarro. Encarnacion, not much of a lead at all over there, but Broxton throws over. Navarro has faced Broxton one time. He struck out. Encarnacion represents the tying run in this 9-8 game Reds. The top of the eighth. Tonight, Navarro won for four. 
His hit came into right. The other three times he hit the ball to left the other way. And I'm sure Jonathan Bronson would take that lazy fly into left field one more time. Reds trying to win the first game of this series as they did in Milwaukee, as they did in Pittsburgh. Trying to do it here against the Blue Jays. Blue Jays trying to avoid equaling their longest losing streak of the year at four. They start the day a game and a half ahead of the Yankees. The Yankees are playing at home tonight and trailing to Baltimore two to one in the ninth. Cardinals after a rain delay are now 1 1 against Philadelphia in St. Louis in the fifth. Philadelphia has played some pretty good ball as of late. They have turned it on a little bit. You're exactly right. I got a long way to go. Milwaukee leading 8 6 at Colorado. That game is in the fourth. Edwin Jackson beat the Pirates today. Six to three. Check swing. And he went. One and two. Reds hang on and win here. They would move. A game and a half again ahead of the Pirates for third. Again they start the day. Seven and a half behind that first place Milwaukee club. Three games behind the second place St. Louis team. Center field. Schumacher on the run. He's not going to get it. And Canacion racing around third. Here comes the throw home. It's not in time. And the Toronto Blue Jays have fought all the way and come back from an eight run deficit and have tied this game 9 9 here in the eighth. Fastball, Mazzarocco had set up away. And again, that ball in the middle of the plate. And it was not down, it was up a little bit. And it allows Navarro to put it into the gap. Marcus Stroman, one of the starters for this club. Comes off the bench and will run at second base as the go ahead run for Navarro. Drummond initially, the list we saw was going to pitch in the game here on Sunday, but they had moved uh, their, their rotation around so the Reds will miss him. Morris had a big night. He's three for four, including that home run in the seventh inning against Jumbo Diaz. Bronson is charged with a blown save. Thirteen hits now by the Blue Jays. And this is not what that Reds bullpen needed. It was a game that has potential to go into extra innings. I had to wonder how much they thought they'd even get any work tonight with an eight nothing lead early. Hamilton coming on on this fly ball. Billy gets there, has it, and the inning is over. But a double to left center by Deonor Navarro has tied this game 9 9 in the middle of the eighth.
with your Miller Time moment on this date in Reds history. June 20th, 2004 at St. Louis, Ken Griffey Jr. career home run number 500. On that day, became the 20th player to reach the 500 mark, and indeed, Dad was there. It was on Father's Day. One of the best moments I've ever seen live in person. Senior and junior with a big hug. And it was a 6-0 Reds victory that day. And Junior would go on to hit 630 home runs. And tomorrow, standing room tickets, standing room only tickets being sold for Ken Griffey Jr. bobblehead night. And in August, he will go in to the Reds Hall of Fame and no doubt a first ballot National Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, we could use his bat maybe here in the eighth or ninth inning to hit one out of the <laughs> ballpark and uh, win this game, couldn't we? Amen to that. Dustin McGowan comes on for the 22nd time for the Blue Jays. He's thrown the ball rather well as of late. He was starting earlier in the season. Now into the bullpen, his last 15 and two thirds innings, he's only allowed two runs. He's part of a new battery as Eric Kratz comes in behind the plate to take over for Deonor Navarro as Navarro had been lifted for the pinch runner. Kratz, the fellow who was drafted by Toronto years ago, went to Philadelphia. Back this year with the Blue Jays. Those are tonight one hit, three trips. Reds get a run here. And they go to the ninth inning as if that run on the eighth didn't uh, didn't take place. It had that one run lead back going into the ninth with Chapman ready to work. Toronto's made three errors tonight. They made four errors in the game earlier this uh, this year against Texas, but all the runs the Reds have scored have been earned runs. Six against. Liam Hendricks, the starter, three against uh, Todd Redman. Towards center field, but playable. Rasmus is there, hit hard by Kozart. Now Brian Pena will bat for Jonathan Broxton. JB goes one inning, one hit, one run, couple of walks. Walks bothered him yesterday. He walked two and two thirds of an inning, and he walks two more here tonight. Inning Pena comes in at 253 with three home runs. He's driven in 14, two for eight, including a pinch hit home run this year. Well, the Blue Jays were able to get one earlier off the bat of Juan Francisco. Maybe the Reds can get one of their own. They've hit two this year one by Pena, one by Chris Heiser. Remember, that was the pinch hit grand slam against Tampa Bay. A pinch hit in the ninth yesterday hit the ball hard on a line drive into right field. Unfortunately, the ball was caught. That was against Grilly. As the final out of the ninth, the Reds had, had the home run by Mesoraco to tie it. The two out double by Cozart. Pena pinch hit, squared it up, but unfortunately, right at Polanco. Yeah, if that ball's five or ten feet left or right. Game wouldn't have gone to extra innings. Nucky Cabrera makes the play. And there are two up. Back to the top now in Billy Hamilton. Billy been on twice in this game. The RBI double in the second. And the error by Kawasaki in the sixth. And this is where Hamilton can be so dangerous. Two outs, he comes to the plate. Even a flare into the outfield, we've seen him turn it into a double. Just getting on base.
get aboard. Frazier standing in the on deck circle. Take your chances of stealing second base. See if Todd can drive him in. Red scored eight in the second, led eight nothing, scored one more time in the fifth inning. Four batters in the sixth, four batters in the seventh, first two out here in the eighth. Chapman ready to come on and work in the ninth inning, regardless of the situation. But I would imagine after an inning and a third yesterday, probably only going to see Chapman for one inning. Yeah, Brian Price said uh, after the game yesterday and again today, reiterated the fact that as you talked about we talked about Broxton just didn't appear to have it yesterday and once he walked the batter right before uh, McCutcheon Marte said I just can't let him face him I've got to come on and get uh, Chapman in there. And let's face it with Chapman it really doesn't matter left or right. No. Not the way he's throwing the ball right now. As hot as McCutcheon was coming into that series, and as well as he hits Reds pitching, Chapman just locked him up. Well, McGowan really turning up the dial on the velocity. 96 on that last pitch to Billy Hamilton. Trying to get on here in the bottom of the eighth. Nine nine game. First game of this three game series against the Blue Jays. Now we've got to look at a three two pitch. This Toronto bullpen. We talked about the Reds bullpen struggles. Toronto came into this game 12th in the American League out of their pen with a 450 ERA. Stays alive. They got a good work, a good innings worth of work out of Chad Jenkins in the sixth. Same thing can be said about Sergio Santos in the seventh. But Dustin McGowan try to equal that. Todd Redmond in long relief gave up three. Billy gets it in the air toward right center, but very playable. Rasmus is there, and we'll head to the ninth. This game is tied 9 9 into the ninth here in Cincinnati.
brought to you by Chevy. Visit your Tri-State Chevy dealers today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, who ranks third in the country on U.S. News and World Report's 2014 Best Children's Hospitals. Remember to stay with us after the game. Fox Sports Ohio, break it down. First ones to talk with the skipper, Brian Price. That's Reds Live post game. Brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. We hope we get an interview with Jeff Pokora down on the field. That will mean the Reds will have won this game. Meanwhile, trying to shut the door in the top of the ninth inning will be a role as Chapman. He certainly did it yesterday. Came on and finished it off in the ninth. Struck out the side in the tenth, faced all four batters, and they all went down via the strikeout. And he comes on here to work the top of the ninth. And Chapman has been, I would say, Jim, he's been better this year than we've ever seen him. Being able to throw the breaking ball and the changeup for strikes. And he's still pumping triple digits at will. After yesterday's outing, his ERA has dropped under one now at 0 0.98. The best he did was two years ago at 1.51. But yeah, you mentioned the changeup. It really seems to have been the pitch that's kind of gotten him over the top and it's given him more confidence. Chapman is showing this year why the Reds even entertained the thought of making him a starter because he's got three pitches that he can throw for a strike and he's throwing any of them at any time and he throws a hundred plus. Well, he gets Colby Rasmus to lead things off. Lefty lefty matchup. Hey, the fans get a kick out of Chapman coming into the ball game because as soon as that gun registers 100 or 101, you can hear the oohs and ahs throughout the stadium. He's gone 13 straight appearances without allowing a run. He's allowed two runs this year, the last of which was at Washington on May the 19th. His only blown save of the year. Chapman took a little off of that one to get it over 99. Last 13 appearances is what we're talking about. 13 and a third, no runs, three hits. Two and two. Rasmus to be followed here by Kawasaki. And then Eric Kratz, the catcher in the nine spot. There's Munenori. You take that pitch right there. I agree with you. It's the only way is because you know you can't hit him. Well, he works a walk out of him. Chapman, we mentioned, worked in yesterday's game, Cowboy. Four batters, four strikeouts. Look at the strikeout pitches from Chapman. The changeup locks up. Andrew McCutcheon. There's the slider down and in to Gabby Sanchez. Another slider gets Josh Harrison. And then check this changeup out. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I mean, that had some serious down and away action. When Chapman's throwing those kinds of pitches, that's a little unfair. Fun to watch, but unfair for the other folks. He faces his second straight left-handed hitter here in the person of Kawasaki. Lefties this year 
against Chapman hitting 077. The league hitting 102, but lefties 077. He walks the leadoff man. That's the go-ahead run. Kawasaki has two hits and a walk in tonight's game. A big hit against Jumbo Diaz. They try to bump the runner along. Frazier will throw on to first. Kawasaki gets the job done. Fundamentally sound player right there. Manager John Gibbons playing a little National League style baseball. The American League slugging style for the first eight innings of play got him back into the ball game. Now he's just fishing for one run. He had his closer Casey Jansen up and throwing earlier. Here's Eric Kratz batting for the first time. 222 hitter with three home runs. This guy can hit a fastball now. He has a hit and two at bats lifetime against Chapman. That hit, in fact, was a home run. It came in Philly and it was a game winner. Jansen is now up again and throwing in the Toronto bullpen. Go ahead, runners. Rasmus at second with one out. Nasty slider right there. And you watch the head and the neck here of Eric Kratz. I mean, he's so far out in front of that ball, he's looking at his manager by the time he gets the bat through the strike zone. He is looking for nothing but the number one. Price did not think this would be a white knuckle type game tonight after the second when his team led eight nothing. Neither did I. Right after three in the eighth, two in the sixth, three in the seventh, one in the eighth. That last one coming in an RBI double by the former Red Deanna Navarro that scored in Carnacion. Toronto has fought all the way back to tie things nine nine. Kind of been called on that. Chapman had already started in his motion, and as an umpire, you're not supposed to award timeout there. See the expression on Brian Price's face. He did not agree with Fox Tracks at all. When the heater there, Kratz went up and out of his zone to try to get it and missed. Field by Kratz. Schumacher on the run. He's not going to get it. Off the wall. Here comes the runner to the plate. Rasmus. He will score. Eric Kratz, who hit that tying home run last year in Philadelphia, gets the RBI double here against Chapman in the ninth. And as hard as it is to believe, Toronto now has a 10 9 lead in the ninth. They have come all the way off the 8 to nothing map. 
to put 10 on the board. Slider down and in, and Kratz just drops the head to it. If that ball's any higher, it's out of here. Casey Jansen will come on to try to save this game in the bottom of the ninth inning for Dustin McGowan. The question now is how large will the Toronto lead be? Reyes fouls that one off the mask of the home plate umpire Alan Porter. Caught up around the top of the mass of Porter. And even with the foul ball, that baby's coming in there at 100 miles an hour. And it looks like he has on one of those protective uh, helmets inside his hat. Like it caught him right about eye level, didn't it? Yeah. Reyes turns around and bats now from the right side. Different hitter from this side of the plate, 222. Hitless tonight. Lead off walk to Rasmus in this inning. John Gibbons elects to bunt Kawasaki to move the runner along as Cowboy, you mentioned, playing a little National League baseball here late. And it paid off. Kratz comes up with the 3 2 pitch and the double off the wall and left. Rivera down there fielded that ball, the third base coach of the Blue Jays. Broken bat by Reyes. There's Luis. That is Luis Papa Rivera. My former shortstop in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. And he was awesome. Get it done, huh? If he could hit a little better, he'd have lasted a long time in the big league because he could flat pick it. That where you learned the splitter down there? That's exactly where I learned the splitter. Got me to the big leagues. From our guy Mark Riggins. You got it. Swing and a miss. Reyes is the second out of the inning. Matter will be Melky Cabrera. Well, there are not too many ball games as you see that 101 mile an hour fastball into the mitt as the bat comes underneath. Not too many ball games where you see Broxton. And Chapman give up a run in the same game. That is, it's not happened this year. Well, we mentioned 13 consecutive appearances without a run allowed ends here tonight for Chapman. There's one uncorked with Cabrera at the plate, and it moves Kratz over to third. And Broxton coming into the ball game tonight had only given up one run all year. Mm -hmm. And I know that as a fan, you watch the ball game and your guys that pitch the eighth and ninth inning, you think, well, they're just going to be perfect every single time out. That's not going to happen. Even the best give up a run every now and then. It's just what makes this game so difficult is the fact that the Reds were leading eight to nothing after two innings. They knocked the Toronto starter out of the ball game. But the middle relief for the Reds was just not able to hold Toronto down. And that has been a recurring theme that is not pretty. This is a huge out now right here. You're down by one. You certainly don't want to be any further behind. This team hasn't mustered much offense since that big eight run second. Only one run. Uh, you want to give yourself a chance with your home run hitters coming to the plate, Frazier, Votto, Phillips, and, and maybe Bruce. A chance with one swing of the bat to either tie it or win it. Well, they've not had more than four batters in an inning since they scored the eight and the second.
I mean, even the Blue Jays, let's face it, they come in having been swept at New York. Their lead down to one and a half. The month of June has not been overly kind to them under 500. They get down eight nothing after two. Even in that dugout, they've had to be thinking the probability of coming back to win this game is slim. Not that we're not going to try, but the probability is thin. Right. But here they are owning a 10 9 lead now in the ninth. Pitch here. The right center. Bruce closing. He's not going to get it. That's a base hit. Second hit of the inning now against Chapman by Toronto. RBI for Cabrera is his 38. Well, we talked about. Both offenses early and they have both shown up. But the problem for the Reds is the Toronto Blue Jays offense just keep showing up over and over and over again. Chapman had given up two runs all year. He's given up two now here in the ninth inning. Bring Jose Bautista to the plate. Last time Chapman gave up two runs in an inning, August 16th of last year at Milwaukee in a 7 6 loss. That was a blown save and then a subsequent loss by Aroldis. Here's Bautista. Three walks. A big double play at the time hit into in the eighth. Ahead of the right field of the Jays, two strikes. Cowboy mentioned Fraser, Votto, Phillips. Anybody gets on Bruce in the bottom of the ninth against Casey Jansen. Jansen has 12 saves this year at a 1.29 ERA as the closer for this Blue Jays club. <laughs> Some time on their disabled list at Jansen with a back issue. In fact, started the season on the DL, wasn't activated until the middle of May. You just look at the after effects of this kind of ball game. This is one that you really have to put behind you, even if you come back in the ninth inning. Because there is not one Pitcher in that Reds bullpen, I would imagine that's not worn out right now. Four ten is going to come tomorrow afternoon, and whether you like it or not, yep. you got to play again. You're right. From 0 2 now to 3 and 2. Sam LeCure has been warming up in the Reds bullpen. 
Brian Price out. Aroldis Chapman will not make it through this inning. He gives up two hits, two walks, one strikeout. And with Edwin Encarnacion due up, Brian Price will take the baseball from Aroldis Chapman. Pitching change here in the top of the ninth. At all that our oldest Chapman is relieved from a game. No, it's not. And you could sense the frustration from our oldest Chapman, especially after the the run scored and Kratz hit the ball off the wall. But as I was saying earlier, there's nobody perfect. I don't know that I've ever heard of a pitcher going through a season without giving up a run. It's just part of the process. <laughs> You're going to have some rough nights. So Sam LeCure comes on as the second pitcher of the inning and the sixth Reds reliever to work in this game. Everyone has worked other than J.J. Hoover. This is basically what we saw in yesterday's ball game. And the Reds had to go through six in yesterday's game. With Homer Bailey having started in that one. The only difference in the names in tonight's ball game out of that bullpen is Diaz is in there instead of Singrani. Problem is, they may be crying for a day off. They had the day off on Monday the 16th and don't have another day off until July the 3rd. You're talking about a long stretch. You're talking about 16 days and 17 games, if I'm adding this correctly. And a little bit more than that, even. 19. Strap it on. Why it's a man's game. You play it in the backyard with your kids. They play it wiffle ball in the backyard. But when you get paid the big bucks, you better come on with it. It is a grind. 162 games in 182 days. And you have a couple of stretches like this team is going through now in terms of days in a row. They have the double header against Chicago. Once they come home from the West Coast, they have the game, uh, the day off on the third, and then that homestand, and it also includes a double header. Yeah, starting on Tuesday, 16 straight days without a day off, so over two weeks.
And this is day four. Encarnacion tonight has that three run homer back in the third. One for four with a walk. An 11 9 lead now for Toronto after they once trailed 8 0. 15 hits on the board for the Blue Jays. One shy of the most given up by the Reds in a game this year. Here he worked one third of an inning yesterday. Face one batter, Polanco was able to get him hit into a force play. Worked in the first game of the series on Tuesday at Pittsburgh, and that's when he was touched up for three runs in one third of an inning. You know, if you think about it, this this is just an aberration for this Reds pitching staff. Normally. You put four or five runs on the board, you're going to win the ball game. The Reds have put nine on the board tonight. Handed to the Blue Jays. They didn't give up. They came back. They came off the map. Sam now gets a visit from Devin Mezzarocco. And we hear Brian Price talk about this a lot. You score some runs early. You've got to continue to add on, continue to put the pressure on the other ball club. Don't let them back in it. Take away their hope. And this is pure evidence that that is wise advice. Oh boy. A monster bomb to left field on a hanging breaking ball by Encarnacion. It's a second home run of the night. He now has six runs batted in on the evening. This has been a five run ninth. And a 14 to 9 Toronto lead. If Encarnacion wanted to make a statement coming back into this ballpark, he's done it tonight. There's no doubt about that. Wow. Two three run homers tonight by Edwin Encarnacion. Dog play of the game. 
This one made by Kawasaki. Nice play going to his right. He gets Schumacher. That occurred in the fifth in the uh, seventh inning. A terrific play by Muninori Kawasaki. Uh, John Morrell hot dog play of the game. And that was a run saving play because that was a two out bullet with a runner at second base off the bat of Schumacher. That ball gets by Kawasaki. The Reds would have had a two run lead when Broxton came into the game. And now Casey Jansen will come on in what the Blue Jays never ever figured would be a non save situation. 16th appearance of the year. He works the bottom of the ninth inning. Frazier leading it off. The Reds now down 14 to 9. They've been outscored 14 to 1 since the second when they led 8 0. For those of you who like these kind of things, Aroldis Chapman gives up four runs in two thirds of an inning tonight, matches the most runs given up by Chapman. In his career, he gave up four against the Cardinals on the 15th of May 2011. in Pittsburgh Jim about this offense of the Blue Jays and really seemed non-existent early in the ball game they did score three runs in the third Obi Rasmus will make the play on this ball when you rally back from an eight run deficit and you win going away I would say that this offense for the Blue Jays was clicking on all cylinders and the Reds the Reds were clicking as well. That second inning when the Reds scored eight times was as impressive as we've seen in years. No doubt. No doubt. A couple of two run homers one by Mesoraco one by Bruce Bruce was two for two in the inning. Jay's had a wonderful night. Two for three on the night. He scored three runs, hit a home run. Bottle, meanwhile, has hit in all nine games in which he has played upon his return. Has not extended that tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a walk, scored back in that eight run second. This one up. Lori will make the play, and there are two out. Well, the big hit for Toronto that tied the game came against Broxton off the bat of the former Red, Deonor Navarro, in the eighth inning after the walk, and then the double play hit into by Batista. We were feeling pretty good about things. Yeah. But then Broxton walked in Carnacion. Navarro got the double. And then, as you talked about earlier, in the seventh inning, the double by Mesoraco and the ball absolutely scorched by Schumacher and a terrific play made by Kawasaki. What's amazing about the Blue Jays offense tonight, they did not get their leadoff hitter on base one time. 0 for 6 tonight, Jose Reyes. And you would think that would be a key to their offense, but it has been power hitting for the Blue Jays tonight. It came in with it. 95 home runs and yeah. have not let up against the Reds here tonight. Four of them. They have 99 now. Yeah, you, you said if Edwin Encarnacion wanted to come in here and make a statement about He's done it. And I thought earlier, I was talking about it early when we went on the air. The one guy in that lineup that really wants to prove a point is Edwin Encarnacion. Boy, did he ever. You come back, you play against a club that traded you, uh, the club you came up with, 
And things didn't go well here for Edwin. It was, and that happens sometimes. They didn't go well for him initially in Toronto. Somehow the light turned on for him. 2012. He can pretty much say right now, how do you like me now? No question. Phillips strikes out and the game is over. And what turned out to be a very disappointing night was very, very good early. But in the end, the Reds lose this game, their first loss after giving up an eight run lead since May the 20th, 2010, down in Atlanta. They led that one 8 0 down there. They lose it 10 to 9. Remember, that was on the Grand Slam. They lose tonight by the final score of 14 to 9 in the first game of this series to the Toronto Blue Jays. A Nissan drive and two of them by Edwin Encarnacion. Three run over. He hit in the third. Came against Matt Latos at the time. That made it eight to three red legs. And he had a big blow in the ninth inning. Put some separation between these two clubs on Nissan drives of the game by the former red current Blue Jay Edwin Encarnacion. 14 9 final Toronto winner. Red's Live post game presented by Performance Kings Honda is next. <laughs>